is going on, guys? Welcome to the Games for Life podcast for each and every Friday slash Saturday discussing all things games. I'm one of your hosts, Jarrell. With me is my co-host and uh, uh, mustacheless co-host, <laughs> Arthur. What's going on, man? Try yeah. to- I know exactly. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is this guy? I see most of his face. <laughs> I shaved. I don't know. Uh, I I forgot. I clean. I don't know. I clean it pretty good. Cause the other thing was my mustache too, and it bugs me. You know, for those of you that don't facial hair, I mean, this conversation stop for you. But keep watching. But for everyone else, cause like my mustache, it bugs me cause it, it like goes ninety percent to my beard. So like the fact that it doesn't connect, like you guys. Like, it doesn't connect, and it's like, ah, it bugs me. So it's either it's like you go all in, and I don't know. I'll admit, like, my like my sister made some smoothies. Dude, ever, but it wasn't there, but, you know, you know, you know, no straw. And you, when you drink it in a cup, man, you got, like, a mustache. Even for me, when I was trying to maintain it, I'm like, ah, I'm going to go without mustache for a while. So I'm going to eat food. <laughs> so I'm going to eat food. I have, oh, have only leftovers down here, not mm-hmm. also up here. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And joining us, of course, is our other co-host of the Game Life podcast, uh, my man Church in the building with us. Uh, joining us, unfortunately, he couldn't be with us the last episode, but is uh, here now. What's going on, man? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I'm sad I couldn't be here last week, um, but I'm happy to be here today. I've been playing Halo Infinite again. What? Season three started a couple, I think, <laughs> last week. So I've been playing Halo again, man. And... We got to get into that because last time mm-hmm. I heard from you, you're like, man, fuck Halo Infinite. <laughs> you... Let me know. Let me know when I can go off. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what is happening? <laughs> I don't know if Arthur's just as perplexed as I am, but. <laughs> dude, I'm like, dude, I'm like, man, it's like circling a drain, and Church is like, I'm going to jump in. Be right back. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Before we know all the risk, you guys don't have to. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, aka get, aka get a Google Stadia or PSVR (laughs) two. Yes, please, please do that because we are, we are not, uh, we, we're, we're not as brave as you are. (laughs) Oh, I mean, brave's not the entire. No, it's right. brave. Because it's <laughs> so I can pull up some other uh, I mean, <laughs> words in the I Althosaurus. Mean, there's brave, and then there's people who bought a Stadia. I mean, like, I don't know if that's a correct. Hey, Send hey, them. Founders hey, Edition. Founders Edition. Watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> Put some respect, I, okay? Dude, like, Joe, my name. Like, yeah, my Joe, name is my you? name. <laughs> Push your teeth said it best. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like church is like one more year from the, like, guys. So I pre-ordered. Soldier Boy's console. <laughs> <laughs> it's lit. Man, I believe in the game, our gaming future. You guys didn't have a vision. It's okay. <laughs> I'm, hey, Stadia didn't it either, so we're, we good. That's funny. I mean, it just, it's just it's it's Xbox. It's not Stadia anymore. But the streaming was real, man. There you go. There you go. I mean, yeah. so you're on to something. Lady, so was the latency. So was the latency. But I mean, you know. It was a lot. <laughs> oh man well uh if you are joining us here hello be sure to uh, like and subscribe on the youtube channel if you're watching this uh and be sure to follow us on your podcast application of your choice if you prefer to listen to these episodes if you want to check out arthur's streams uh via the youtube channel for gamers for life be sure to again like and subscribe here on the channel so you can be there for that or if you wanted to see what's going on in general all things Gamers for Life, like the rest of our audio episodes, we have a great catalog on. And then, by the way, uh, side note, this is the 99th episode. Arthur, we have almost done this for almost two years, man. Is that crazy? It is. I mean, I still count tips and chips, man. Like, that was fun. Hey, man, 2016, good times. Uh, terrible audio, but good times. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah. It's really, yeah, it's, it's really funny. But with this, yeah, two years, it. I mean, it's really funny because this is like the only, only thing of like I want to say staple, but this is like my thing where like people, you know, people we all collectively just lost track of time during COVID. Like, yeah. oh, let me just stretch my arms in April. I just got fired. Uh, hey, whoa, it's almost 20, 2023. What happened? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, definitely, this podcast kind of helped get us through that as well. Um, but again, if you want to check out anything Gamers for Life, be sure to go to linktree.com for stuff Gamers for Life, our one stop shop link do all things of the show and here at the games fly podcast we read the news while you can watch or listen to what you choose by clicking on the links of the time code within the description of the episode so you can just get to what you want to listen to or watch or you can just hang out with us here at the games for life podcast 
And uh, just to rip the Band-Aid off, uh, let's just dive right into it, man. Last of Us is over. Uh, the season one, that is. Uh, the, the season finale was last week. And uh, I had to I had to catch up because uh, I had to get to watch the <laughs> the one after that. I was like, oh, so I was able to watch uh, the eight and nine pretty much within twenty four hours between each other. Um, but let's start out with Church just because one he wasn't here last week, and then two, um, you know, he had a, quite a few comments from you know say the earlier days of when we were watching the show, uh, especially when it came to you know how he felt with Ellie and Joel if their chemistry was good. You know, uh, really believing in Ellie and then the you know Bella Ramsey's uh, performance, but uh, just to just clean slate, open blanket. Uh, what are your what were your thoughts on uh, the show, man? Yeah, man. I, I, I'm fortunate to say, like, I have not watched the finale of Last of Us. Uh, I, I'm I, I know <laughs> I've I've been behind on my TV watching. Um, mm. Live caught up, but uh, yeah. I've heard that you know it was good from the mm. people around me, but. Uh, I have to catch up on it, man. I've, I have. I don't know anything. Did you right see eight? Now. Yeah. Did you see episode um, eight? No, I haven't seen eight. I'm behind. Ah, I'm, okay. I haven't seen seven, eight, oh nine. So seven. I, oh shit. Yeah. I when they, <laughs> as soon as they did the flashback, I was like, I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> like, like I said, the like phone said, started no, ringing. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Like I said, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of words. Brave's not one of them. This guy is the episode seven. Stop <laughs> <laughs> kidding. All right, all right, all right. Break it up. Bad, break it up. What, what you guys? Uh, you low fruit. Would you tell me what you thought of the show? All right, since you guys. All right. All right. What, what yeah, are your well, thoughts? Let me pass. It, let me pass it to you, Arthur. What were your thoughts? Dude, I loved episode eight. Um, uh, because for me, because again, episode eight was my favorite segment of the game. So that's the thing I was most looking forward to then adapting because that was part of the game where you know th this became because it was joel's story and ellie was just in it like both game and the two both mainly for the game it was joel and ellie joel being the main character that segment of the game is like no ellie ellie's her own thing and that was a, that was a hell of a sequence in the game and i was wondering how they're going to do it and again curious how they're going to do it in the show i think they killed it i think they did great um i like the Easter egg cameo. We talked about it first. Um, I would say, I'd argue, mainstream acting credit for Troy Baker, um, and how they definitely. By the way, with that type of villain, I feel like it's not the hardest to go from like cannibal to pedo. That like dial, it's not that hard to take over. Uh, <laughs> um, but the season finale, <laughs> they did something I wanted to see i talked about it before because because naughty dog is one of the few um companies that really does this they they they, they kind of take a step back and be like hey this hero good guy this hero bad guy thing you know i i you know look to the end of uncharted the game number one that guy gives you a huge lecture of like you think you're the good guy you've killed like 200 guys to get here and so what i mean by that is naughty dog really letting you know like hey you think you're the good guy you've killed tons of people to get here and how they did that last sequence in the show i think they did it perfectly because when you're playing the game you're joel you are joel in the game now we're not joel we are the audience so now we get to see that perspective shift that tone shift where you're no longer joel doing this we are the audience watching this unfold with joel front and center we get to see the whole thing so i thought the way and the tone they handled it of jo of joel just plowing and just silently murdering over a dozen people that up until that point we weren't we didn't really establish that oh they're the bad guy they're just people in the way and that's the thing i thought they did amazing in that is how they handled that sequence and they handled it exactly the way i wanted to handle it i was like hey man we keep saying joel's the great joel's a good guy joel's a good guy i'm just like dude they do, they do, they do. he kills a lot of people and I think that shift of in the game, you are Joel, to now we are not Joel. We are the audience watching it. I think they did a great job to transition that um, moment, that sequence, into what will eventually be a big turning point in the season two, like it was in part two. Mm. So that was my that was my favorite thing for season finale, that we are not Joel. We're the audience watching it. And when you are watching what Joel does – it is hard to say he is the good guy after that. Mm, mm. 
that's an interesting perspective. I never really thought of it as far as like Joel to the audience because I always thought I was watching Joel. But I think um, I did like how it was shot. I like I like the sequence. I like the 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 sequencing of how that last that last scene portrayed. I thought that was really well done. Taking a slight step back as far as episode eight, I really enjoyed episode eight as well. I thought that was arguably one of the best episodes of the season. Um, I thought the guy who played the preacher was on point. Uh, Troy Baker did a really good job. My only critique and and would be like I would have liked it even more if Troy Baker was the preacher. You know what I mean? I just think he just oh. has such a great sinister voice. You know, I mean, obviously he's a professional voice actor. He's you know he's done Joker and obviously Joel and also other people uh, from yeah. like DC shows and shit. Um, but uh, I thought that would have been even better. But obviously, you know, he he uh, he auditioned and that's the part that he got. But uh, oh yeah, oh I, oh I thought. That, they said they didn't, they didn't write the role for him. They're just like he like properly did the audition thing. No, yeah, yeah. There was an interview. He, he auditioned. Oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't oh, my, oh, yeah. It wasn't handled. That's that surprised me. I thought like, hey, 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 Troy, we got a role for you. Come on in. Well, no, you like would, okay. no, no, you would think so, right? Because he, you know, he yeah. plays Joel, so it's like, oh, like we got locked in for like, no. I guess he actually auditioned uh, per an interview that I was uh, I skimmed through, skimmed by, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought uh, I thought that I thought how they how they pulled that off was really good. I really liked that conversation too, when Ellie's pointing the rifle at the preacher guy, you know, and talking about how like you know, oh like yeah, like this is all you know meant to be or whatever. And he's like, hey, let me give you an example. And he gives that an example exactly. I was like, that was really solid how they executed that. Um, yeah, and, and I thought season nine was solid. You know, I mean, they pretty much they, they didn't necessarily fully carving. I think, for the most part kind of carbon copied um the end right as far as just like the end of the game i thought it was kind of interesting too when you're seeing that doctor get shot you know what i mean because like part of me was remembering like man like i'm trying to remember like how i shot that guy at the game <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? there were some specific key moments i'm trying to reflect of how quick were they because in the show it was like i can't do this boom moving on he's dead we're done. right like, right go. So it's just like you never. It's like it's like that one moment to spark will spark a whole chain of events for the following season, which is kind of interesting. And then, um, yeah, I liked how they ended it too, as far as because it's interesting. It it's interesting too, right? Because for that for that last episode, you know, the tone of Ellie completely changes from any from from how she is for the entire season, right? So you have these building points of her, you know, uh, having a wall up, similar how Joel they both have their walls up, and these walls get broken down throughout the show, and then you see the most intimacy as far as them really like missing each other, because um, Joel obviously gets better because the medicine that Ellie gets, and after that, you know that 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 place burns down and she's you know, stabs the preacher to death, you know, finally just like really missing Joel. And that's like the most like intimate part of the whole show as far as like, like, yeah, like we're, you know, like we are two peas in a pod officially. Right. And then the last season, the last episode where I think Bella Ramsey does a really good job just kind of having this face of like, we are almost at the point where we can't be together anymore. You know, like we can't hang out anymore. You know what I mean? So she kind of has this cold face, but uh, but the strong face at the same time. So I was like, okay, so this is what needs to be done. And then I heard that draft was real. The the draft that, that, that she feeds, I heard that's, that was a real draft. I was draft. wondering, okay, I was wondering, okay, the draft. I, because I, I watch a lot of quarter crew and quarter digital and like anime, animators react. So I, I, there's like certain things I try to pick up on now of like, because they do they do the classic is it CGI is it not CGI right like r like real quick example like a lot of shots from Avatar Way of Water because the way Avatar animates water is like in a level beyond anything anybody else the way Weta um did the way Weta digital does water is worlds beyond the way anybody else does water so there's a big is water is it not water um so the draft okay close up shots I'm like is that a draft like just just again the close up shots was like way too way too detailed. And like tongue and the leaf, I'm like trying again, trying to try and picture it. Like, are they handing this to a green screen? Because that's a lot of rotoscoping. That's just, I'm like, that's so good. And then it zooms out, and you're like, I mean, when I mean zooms out, it's like, let's say halfway to the neck up. When I did, when you, when, you, when you just see like them feeding it, close up, zoom out. Both of, both kickers are in shot. There's a draft. I'm like, that's a CGI draft. Zoom in, they're feeding it. I'm like, that's different. So mm. I, I can see what you mean of, of how that was a real draft. Cause I was right now, I was wondering that myself in the scene. Yeah. Close up, I'm like, that looks really good. Far back, I'm like, CGI draft. CGI draft looks great, but 
a noticeable improvement on those close up feeding shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very interesting. So, um, but yeah, man, as far as overall for my consensus, um, I think they, I think they, they nailed it. You know what I mean? It's funny too, as far as just the whole show in its entirety. Um, I, I did find it kind of interesting as far as to your point, Arthur, where you're saying like, man, I, I really wish uh, I could kind of talk to some people that did play the game for what they thought. Seriously. Cause my, cause my friend, uh, well, you know, you know, Brian, you know, I, I was talking yeah. to him earlier this past weekend and, um, he was saying he wished he had more time with some of these antagonists or some of these other characters, you know, and ah. I was like, and I was like, well, I was like, Oh, well, yeah, they were kind of following the blueprint of the, uh, of the game. You know what I mean? And then, and then he, I guess he, he says about stuff that I didn't really necessarily agree with, but I thought it was a really good point that he, um, said as far as like more time for the characters, I said, yeah, I said, you know, they're really just doing one, one ratio sense in a sense. Um, but I really, I feel like they finally set the precedent as far as just like, this is how it should be done. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think, uh, I'm really proud of Neil Druckmann. I think I'm really proud of him for really, uh, working with the cast, like one by one, you know what I mean? One, he, yeah. he, you know, he co-wrote the show obviously, but I thought uh, I thought it was just an excellent, you know, solid, solid representation of games and their stories and how they impact. Now, I will say, as a side note, and this is something that Church can can uh, can uh, chime into as well. He's going to have to see the show for this point that I'm about to make. So let's let's throw a let's throw a wrench in in this uh, in this factory, right? As I hit my microphone. Um, now we all. Now the outside looking in, or, or or maybe inside looking out, as far as like, man, Joel, he lied. He, uh, he, you know, Ellie could have been used to save the world. It can quote the world, right? And uh, he makes the selfish decision of keeping Ellie. The more I watch that, the more I'm like into the story. I'm kind of like, maybe Joel was right to do that to to kill everyone to get to kill the doctors. And the reason why I say that is because. If we know history, right, just talking about this as far as how society is as a whole. If we know history, we know if there's a cure for something, if there's something that can help people in their entirety. Do we usually have uh, everyone holding hands on a hill with rainbows? Hey, let's, let's, let's help everybody, right? No, like, these things are taken, they're monetized. They probably would have centralized this cure to people that they care about and everyone else dies you know what i mean because we'll probably be thinking in essence even if ellie did die obviously this is hypothetical but if Ellie did die and use that that cure for good who's to really say that would actually happen maybe the doctor did have good intentions right but even how the fireflies were technically the good guys they kind of sure as fuck didn't seem like the good guys. Obviously, they're protecting Joe because like, look, this is for greater good. But even in their in their behavior, it's like you don't really know what their true what everyone's intentions were. Maybe the the obviously the one I forgot her name that he shot. Maybe she had good intentions. But who's to say that oh, where that love. cure would have? Who's to say where that cure would have actually have gone? Right. So Barbie's like, well, fuck it. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just have us to kill everybody and spend this time with Ellie. Barbie's like. Maybe Joel was right. I don't know. Or, uh, 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 did you, have you ever thought of anything like that for that for this for that story? I mean, I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, I think I completely disagree, man. I mean, I feel like if we have a cure, we should definitely try to make the cure. I, I understand being like, you know, skeptical, like, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I can condemn like the entire race just because somebody wants to make five dollars or ten dollars off a kill. Mm. Like I feel like we could still make the kill and then figure out how to like necessarily distribute it a little bit. So I can't necessarily mm. say what Joel did was the right thing to do. I understand he did it out of love and a lot of people yeah. might make that decision. Mm. But it, it definitely was at the cost of like a lot of lives, you know. Which yeah. is basically Joel's character. Like, you know, ever since he lost his daughter he became a killer, murderous person, did a lot of stuff for selfish reasons. And yeah. at the end of the show, you know, he really hasn't changed. He still made a selfish choice for, like, himself. Like, what, I guess, like, I always, in the game, I always looked at it, saving Ellie was just, like, a byproduct, but he really wanted to save Ellie for himself because he, he wanted that connection. It's for, like, him to live, so to speak. 
Yeah. yeah. No, and I, and I think and I think that's probably the right thing. But then the 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 older I get, I'm like, well, who's to say that it would say that that whoever had it in the cure in their hands that they would do that. You know I mean, what I mean? <laughs> like, would the world really be saved, or would it be used for a selfish reason to say who I mean, they so want to like, save? It's like, yo, capitalism. Because we don't know how it would turn out. We shouldn't try. Capitalism. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I, like, it's, I don't know. I think you're both. I, mean, I, like, I, I think you're both. Vaccine is free at some point, bro. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, but imagine I think you're both. <laughs> pharmaceutical my, my companies, thing. right? You know, like, it's just... <laughs> see, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Dr- see, Drill's thing capitalistic, and then Church is like like butterflies rainbows you're both no, wrong this, this, is, this is an apocalypse okay look you guys are this is a, really talking about condemning the entire human race no, no, I'm, no, see, but that's my point my point no, is that that's how like, people are self by nature dude if that would have happened federal war federal war federal versus fireflies all over again like it like dude like there's like there's no capitalize there's no capitalizing on it when we're against the federal and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna bomb. They're they're gonna kidnap. They're gonna do whatever. I'm just look. My thing is, when I, when, when Drew, when you're when you're talking about that, the first thing I thought of, first thing I thought of, what's Fedra gonna do? Because man, because in this situation, we're not like 2023 us right now. This happens like no, like in this in this in this scenario in this world, you got people barely scraping by in a rinky dink base. Yeah. And now they have a cure. They, they, they ain't gonna be either. They're gonna be alive for much longer, or there's gonna be not much of a cure for much longer. Because there'll be another war. I like that. That was the first thing with your mind. First thing mm-hmm. my mind is, oh, fireflies have a cure. What's Fedra gonna do about it? Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm pro Fedra. I'm just saying, like, Sound. there's no way. There's no yeah. way they're not. They're gonna ignore it. There's no way they're gonna like let let the fireflies who've been bombing them remember. Because in that pre in that not prequel flashback, remember mm-hmm. the flashback. They're 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 bombing. They're bombing. They're killing Fedra. You know, Fedra's training how to training. Fedra was literally training their their people how to kill fireflies. Fireflies are training how to kill Fedra. So that that's what that's what immediately went through my mind. Mm. Is before it was a war for survival, and it'll just be a war for the cure. That that, yeah. that that's that that that's that that's why I thought. First thing Did, I thought of that, Fedra. Yeah, because for me the next step would be okay. We have the cure. Then they're gonna probably try to sell it to Fedra, sell it to somebody for right. how much, you know, for weapons or how much more. Like it wouldn't be like an Independence Day thing where it's like we got the Queen, we're gonna save the human race. You know, it's like that's how people are. You know what I mean? So, um, but I, it was just a fun. It was just a fun what if in my brain. Yeah. I was just like, you know what? Maybe Joe was right. Maybe maybe <laughs> even if we had the cure. You know, it would build into the wrong hands, and it would again be used for a selfish reason to centralize the population, right? Um, and you know, it would be at the expense of whoever's personal decisions. You know, it's not like it's a, it's not like it's a cure for like an airborne disease where like, okay, well, this is just scientifically gonna be flown around, and then eventually it'll be good. Or say like COVID, right? As far as like the, the pandemic endemic those phases you know yeah. where it's just like yeah. eventually you know we'll find something and it'll be you know it won't uh, it'll be a cold versus like you know, oh god i'm gonna die overnight right yeah um so i guess that's kind of my my consent sort of just like, you know what maybe joe was right but uh just a fun I, a fun one factor but uh i will, what, what, I will say something that church that the church said before that i sure. almost like i'm not saying like like cheering for you interrupted and you're saying how joel wasn't doing like yeah like joel saving ellie was a byproduct the goal was to have ellie with joel that's why i was almost joking i'm like sorry spoiler i'm like oh you sure you didn't watch episode nine because <laughs> because and so so joel was talking about how like El- that shift in ellie yeah like so the so a couple things I'm, a couple things that are shifts and phases of ellie when episode eight ends and ellie just came out of stabby stabby pedophile wants to do his thing and i have a blade to stop you like trump like trauma and she was in peak freak out ptsd mode and joel like calms her down he's like oh you know come, you know kind of like you know, that, that dad phrase come here baby girl like so come here. just like you put the coat on her i'm like that was prime like boom they're in it you know they're right or die it's them against the world like that was like the end of episode eight was them against the world that's it then Episode nine happens, and all of a sudden, Ellie waking up, boom, that's not the same Ellie. And the thing is, and Drill, I mean, and Drill, 
remember that walk like that when the car finally died and they had to huff it to the town joel was like in prime man what was her name sarah like sarah this sarah that you would like sarah Sarah would have like you i'm like i was watching this like oh joel is full on like crazy dad found a new daughter mode like full uh, full on yeah sarah would have liked you me and sarah used to go hikes all this time do you like hiking nah, nah, nah. sarah like hike da, 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 da. and then you could just you, the again like the ellie silence you know it was like she was it's like you know she was silent but she's shouting and just like she's she she can figure out what's kind of what's what's going on yeah that change in joel because up until now joel has not talked about sarah like openly yeah. that was the goal to not talk about sarah and now he's just like boom 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 boom, boom. that's a good um, point and then and then again it's like yeah, in the episode ends she's like swear to me i need you to swear and it wasn't ended like oh cool thanks i believe you now it was like okay oh yep that's i heard you so so again now that shift in ellie with uh again with like what church was saying have like how he uh, nailed it you know like joel doing making that decision yeah, saving ellie was a prior product that's yeah. like, no he wanted ellie from for himself yeah. Because again, for context in the show too, like you know, for church, you know, you're you know, for add on to your context in the show, um, they have that talk of how Joel Scar in his ear wasn't um like a firefight. That was him flinching when he tried to shoot himself. Yeah. And so and that's what kind of he starts talking about Sarah a little bit right there, or at least what happened. And then yeah, so again that again, one the two things. One, it's like Joel did it for Ellie and himself. And then the shit in Ellie, but again, the shit now the shit in Joel. Because again, Joel, the episode ended with Joel full on like crazy dad mode of like, I found a replacement daughter. <laughs> that's all that's all I remember from that hike is like, oh man, Sarah, you're my new Sarah. Hey, Sarah too. And Ellie just realized I Ellie realizing to a point one, if not that switch in Joel, at least realizing to the point of I don't trust what you said of what happened back there because this story was yeah some raiders came some raiders came i had i i saved you i got you out of there and she's like save me where are my clothes because she was still in the hospital gown. yeah so so yeah that so that so ellie both ellie and joel at the episode of the end of episode of the end of episode nine are both in different mental state and yeah. i'm i'm for for more reasons than one hyped for season two but that yeah. change how the season ended that was oof. And that's how the and that's how the game was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like 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 the game left with this like okay, like Joel made that obviously that decision for himself, you know, and 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 then he has this guilt hanging on, you know what I mean? And by the beginning of, of part two, Joel knows that his time he his his time is slowly up. Like someone will find him. Someone is like he he has a sense of I'm probably not going to be here very long, which is another very interesting notion for the, for the second season. But yeah, I think it's really interesting. I'm kind of sad though, that they didn't, uh, they didn't foreshadow Abby. I know that was one of the, uh, that was one of the rumors, you know, that, that they're thinking that uh, they would do for the game, but or for the, for the show, excuse me. Uh, but they, they, they didn't do that. Um, Why would they do that? Like <clears throat> they want the first season to be successful. Like, most people don't like Abby. Why would it be right? successful? You show Abby. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Well, like, well, I mean, because well, like, well, here nobody likes. Majority of people don't like Abby, so like, that well, here, sneak uh, peek is not going to make people happy. You well, know, here, it's just going to make people angry. Well, hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, I think you're thinking about. I think you're thinking about it like the game, where I'm not. Uh, mm. Even, not even just like. You know where the 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 rest of the show is pointing on Abby. Even just even just having half of a scene where there's a slight interaction between the doctor and, and his daughter, right? Just, just to slowly kind of paint this footprint. Yeah. And remember too, you have people that have not played the game that have watched the show, right? So yeah. you have this demographic of people that no one have these people don't, don't know what's going on because they haven't played the game. Um, but I think because you have so much work to do when it comes to, at least this is from my brain, as far as if they carbon copy the game, for the show, the show will fail. The the the, the viewers will not be there. Uh, again, the premiere was the second highest uh, show in HBO's history, before right behind House of the Dragons. Um, 
the show did so well that they didn't even have to push back the season finale from the same weekend of the Oscars. Because <laughs> the, Oscars us- the Oscars usually has record lows of viewership anyway. But you have to, to me, when it, from a writing perspective, even just showing her in a scene in general, right? And so you slowly get to warm up, you slowly get to say, okay, who's this person, whatever, and try to have this connection of tying them in to where most people didn't like Abby in the game because one, you're playing someone that you don't really know. They kind of force it in the game in a different in that in that particular notion, very different than how they could portray it in a show, right? So it's it's the same way. It's the same way for the the episode three for Bill, right? If they did the Bill that Bill segment in the game, it might not have been that flowed as smoothly as it would for watching the HBO show, but it's a show. So you can, you can create these different things that maybe a game can't provide as much context to. Right. So I just think in general, I would have liked this, even just a snippet, just a snippet to see. So by the time when you're watching, when you're playing the game, they kind of have to backtrack and put these pieces together for you to give a shit, which I thought was probably the worst part of the story writing for last part two for the game, but for the show, because for one, they're thinking about part two being the two seasons like separately, which I don't really agree with. It's kind of Those weird. Definitely hollows. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then trying also, to milk it. <laughs> exactly, they're trying to milk it. And then um, also, Neil Druckmann doesn't really care about what people think about last was part two, which I think is a mistake. Um, Same, because it's no longer his baby. This is HBO's baby. Exactly. I'm like, well, and, H- and if you don't think HBO will cancel you, uh, where's Batgirl? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, guys, you, you have a whole ass viewership, you know, that that uh, you have to make sure those numbers are up because you set this huge precedent and this contract that's already renewed. So I thought from a story, it'd be interesting just to even just to show Abby just for half a second, half a second, you know, or whatnot, because now we have to do this. We have to do this backtrack piece together for you to give a shit writing thing again, you know, so I really feel like part two is the best opportunity for them to go off the cuff very different from the game to have the same impactful story but just written better and done better and shot better you know because it's all story right when i do gameplay it's all story so i think uh they have a lot of work to do i'll say that i'll say that a lot of work to do so yeah i guess i hear your perspective i didn't expect it to introduce abby because of the controversy around the second game and that character in general and just uh, who is who's the maker of Last of Us? Neil Druckmann. Neil Druck- Druckmann, yeah. In yeah, that, I, in I that like curry guy that was upset yeah. for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I think his ego will play into it. Like I think, like he said, he doesn't care about the fans. But you know, view a part two. He he he's probably going to make it. What you know, the way he wants to make it. And I think he had an idea. He wanted a, a shot for shot of the first game. So that's why it didn't fit into his vision. He's like I. The first game is a movie. I'm not going to add anything into it because right. this is the game. Um, so I didn't expect it. And I don't know if, if it would have been good if they did, you know, because the Internet would be talking about how that scene, you know, as opposed to Joel's decision. You know, the game was would have been like, oh, here we go again, you know, adding this controversial person into it again. And maybe we would have downloaded the episode just based off of that or whatever, you know, just, you know, review bomb it. Um, that scene would have that scene would have outshot him so much. Yeah, it would. I would have outshined anything because you know the community that's passionate about it. They're going. They're waiting for the moment, man. They're already next year, season two. Like, <laughs> let me get on my keyboard. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's yeah. that's. But I'm glad you guys seem to like the entire series as a whole. Uh, episode eight and nine seems like they delivered what they need to. Um, I, I got to catch up and I'll, I'll give you guys my thoughts when I finally do. So definitely there, looking forward to it. I'll just say, is there any other like successful gaming show? Like in terms of, I, not, I know what, cause, we, well, cause when we talk about gaming adaptations. Yeah. I forgot, okay. That, by the way, there was a joke. I legit forgot Halo existed. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say successful. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I asked that question, I was I only thought of that Sonic show, just because I feel like the writer behind Knuckles and the voice actor behind the Knuckles in that show is very memeable. He does, yeah. he does a lot of good things. Yeah. But Doug, like, mid sentence while I was saying question, so I finished it. Oh yeah, Halo exists. <laughs> but oh. 
I was going to say in terms of the gaming shows. Castlevania is a very good There you go. Show. Oh, yeah. Dante's yeah, Inferno. That. I mean, but that's a movie, though. Um, yeah, like, like a short film. It's pretty good. The last one they released on Netflix as well. So, you know. Yeah. Um, so, oh, um, I never watched. Oh, here's one I never watched. Second Bloodline, yeah. Okay, now, it's, now it's, it's all coming back. It's all coming back. <laughs> Edge Runners, Arcane. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll say kudos to this show. Oh, well, I would say kudos to this show. I also have a Dory brain, so a little asterisk there. I was yeah. like, this show made me forget about every other game show. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, have a Dory, I have a Dory brain, so huge asterisk for that. Yeah. But I'm. To, I mean, to, as, far, as far as as successful, like like no, like this no. is really this is really a door opening to a whole. As far as it's really one taking the art seriously, which you know, fucking video games is you know how long has it been around? Have they been around? Like as far as the story perspective, like t- finally taking the art seriously, where it can be, you know, projected into you know movies and books and stuff. You know, it's been you know it's been in books before, but um to this of uh, to this level of success i think it's i think it's it's really breaking grounds you know what i mean uh, which is amazing and and definitely proud just like as a gamer i'm just like that's awesome you know what i mean so i would definitely say this is the best live uh, the best live action show because again edge runners it, it, it you know made that game alive again um arcane some yeah. of the best animated fight scenes like i love avatar for more, uh, the last episode for more reasons than one if you love genuinely good anime animated fight scenes not to open that pandora's box but but arcane arcane yeah, I, uh, arcane did it very well arcane is probably the best one in my opinion and i love edge runners edge runners was dope and i love trigo the anime studio that does it i watch everything they do mm-hmm. um but arcane is, is special uh, mm-hmm. i would say it's very special watch it now before you can't pass for a chair <laughs> um yeah. again not to go down that rabbit hole um but just again off the top of my head like when it comes to live action shows i know we've seen a million movies a lot of animations because just in ter- again in terms of style and yeah. overall physics it do you know, it's yeah. just easier to do cgi or animation from a game to thing so as live action challenge this is definitely by far again top of my head there's a killer show i'm forgetting it's definitely not halo <laughs> off the top of my head I can't really think of any other live action show. Um, uh, one thing I'll say is from this, even though it's a real quick to the Abby thing, face value, I'm glad they didn't do it. I hate cliff, I hate cliffhangers. I hate cliff, I hate cliffhanger, I hate cliffhanger movie endings. I hate cliffhanger show endings. So I'm so on that just for that. It was a cliff. One, this the, 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 the original ending is a cliffhanger, but you mean without Abby? <laughs> no, I mean no, I mean yeah, because like I, 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 all of a sudden like you know it would have been like you know again like I joking like this Jack's fist. You know, holding your dead dad or something like, oh, who's that? Boom! Episode ends. We have to wait. Oh no, it. no! I thought you were joking when you said that. Or something. I was like, they can't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Abby comes out, just deadlifts her dead dad. Um, <laughs> um, but again, I'm glad they didn't do Abby because because that's a cliffhanger. Just Abby or not, again, it's a big ignoring it. But cliffhanger. Yeah. I, we'll we'll we'll, we'll 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 deal with that mess next season. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that the, this season as a whole is is a great success now again like church said um if they just shown like even just a couple seconds half a second teaser of abby everyone be talking about that you'll you, you ignoring everything else will be second to that but again even as just a show for people that aren't familiar with the game even i would argue they sorry as i hit my mic i would argue they would be like oh cliffhanger oh because like again you know what i mean that, 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 that's my thing so i think overall is a good call they didn't um show abby um it was a good call a- i just feel, i just feel like it's like pushing back your taxes like sooner or later you have to do them <laughs> like sooner or later we have to deal with this character but but i agree i agree i agree uh, in, in all essence speaking of season two do we have a timeline on like an air date or anything like that or no not yet um, i don't think so right church nothing i mean i'm sure they announced it let me do my let me do my Googles real quick. <laughs> okay. Well, he does that. Well, he does that. I know there was like a sort of article. There was this article that sort of got popular because people don't know how words work. <laughs> and it was like, Bella Ramsey won't be recast. <laughs> and you had two people that were like, yeah, no. And a third group of like, both of you don't know what that word means. <laughs> people are like, yeah, it's going to be a different actor. <laughs> Other people are like, no, she's not coming back. Oh, it's it said, like, it said, will not be recasted. It will say, well, she will, it will not be re, it will not be recast. Oh, okay. And people, okay. And some Got people it. were apparently happy that Belly Ramsey, Belly Ramsey won't be at Ellie. Um, where, you know, the people, then there are people like, no, you know, just defending her. Like, no, she's a great Ellie. And other people are like, 
that's not how words work. <laughs> it means she won't yeah. be recast. It right. Means to, to be the same. Same, same Ellie. Yeah, yeah. Same, same old. Actress. Same old G. Yeah. This is Jenny Wendt. So I don't know why people. <laughs> um, I don't know why people were like, oh yeah, I think she's a great Ellie. Uh, of course, um, Pedro Pascal, he's killing it. Um, oh, pretty yeah. much anything he touches, the guy, the guy's just, oh, guy's just a golden goose right now. Um, with the talent, the back it, not just the face. I would argue in terms of fit, in terms, you know, money for face, that's like the rock. Um, but with talent behind it, Pedro. Um, so I'm excited for season two. Again, with that article, I'm happy Ellie's gonna come back as season. I'm, I'm happy uh, Bella Ramsey's gonna come back as uh, Ellie. I don't know why people are happy about that. I thought she killed it. Uh, Church, how was uh, the Captain Googles? Yeah, so they announced a season two. No release date yet. They haven't even started filming. So oh, okay. we're not expecting anything in the earliest late 2024 is oh, when wow. I would expect it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'm an impatient man. So once again, I'm glad there wasn't a clipping. Um, <laughs> I will say this. I know it was a big, big thing this the first season. Um, the success of the show. I am just telling you now. I, my heart goes out to you. I'm apologizing in advance. I'm so sorry to whoever gets casted as Abby. Just apologies in advance. The internet yeah, is seriously. not going to be happy. The internet is, There's going to yeah. be some flack coming that person's way. I'm gonna whoever, say gets cast, whoever gets casted as Abby <laughs> is, Church is ready. <laughs> not, whoever gets cast as Abby is not about to have to like, <laughs> did you Did you create the Reddit group already? <laughs> uh, I'm ready. I'm locking and loaded, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, regardless, again, regardless of who they cast, oh. the talent behind it, they can have like the most award-winning, Oscar-nominated actress in the history of our species. Whoever gets cast as Abby, hard life comes. Because like, the internet is an internet. Internet's the bad place. People think it's a good, great place. Yeah, um, I didn't grow up in that life. It's it's gonna be a lot. Just call it's it. Gonna a lot be, of death it's gonna be it's gonna be mad four chan. No, you're right. <laughs> you're right. It's gonna be. You're right. It's gonna be. It's gonna be awful. You know what I mean? It's gonna be really bad. And I feel. I feel. I feel bad already. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right in that point that you make there. So, but but at least we have this great season. This great season that they did. Yeah. Um, definitely. Uh, I mean. I don't buy physical things anymore. I, I would even go out to buy the Blu-ray of this just like to have it, you know, and just like this show, like, oh, you guys did a good job, you know what I mean? Probably not because I don't have a Blu-ray player, so I'll, I'll walk that back. But because uh, <laughs> I buy everything digi- cause I buy everything digitally now. But um, Facts. yeah. So uh, speaking of remakes, uh, I don't have an article on this. I just think it's I think it's great. Just like a small top uh, topic we can talk about. Resident Evil 4. Uh, Church, I'm glad you didn't have it in your fantasy card. Because... I'm so mad, bro. I had the vision. <laughs> I'm not. I had the vision. Rules. I was rules like, rules. I'm, rules are meant to be broken. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, the game the game has oh. killed it, man. I think they're getting 10s out of 10s. Perfect 10s. Uh, I mean, my score would have been up. I mean, <laughs> so when Arthur was like, uh, no, we can't. <laughs> no, because there's a reason why I didn't pick it. Because it, there's a reason why I didn't pick it. Because we had a list of games or types of games you can't pick yeah otherwise that'd been my number one pick here's the kingdom <laughs> leon's back let's go Ooh, and... a switch oh man this game boy advanced ultra is gonna look great <laughs> <laughs> yeah man i'm really uh shit I, I might have to i might have to pick up a copy uh or download it to, to play it because oh, yeah God. i'll catch it on sale i mean i'll play the game again it's it's going to be great we know it's going to be great do we need to spend 60 dollars up front to uh, catch me in eight months when it's half off and like i'm good and i'm, I'm i don't happy. know man you're the reason why we never got days gone too like i mean <laughs> they, <laughs> They know Days Gone too is terrible, bro. Like, who wants to play that, dude? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like, yeah. I still like was it the main developer, or the main writer. So yeah. man, people didn't play full price to my game, so there won't be a season, there won't be a sequel. Oh yeah, he ranted about that. We're just like, man, fuck off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now he wants to make an NFT game, like a second day, like, bro. Like, you know, at least, <laughs> Respectfully. Yeah, <you're> not... <laughs> this, guy's compl- this guy's complaining about love. This guy's complaining, yeah, it's like, all love. You know, if you want to do it, it's fine. But yeah. <laughs> Look to the guy who made Days Gone, and you want your game, you want people to buy your game full price and always full price. Go Nintendo. They got you. They don't have to spell the world sale. Oh, I don't know. Is there an E? Who knows? I don't know. Very true. They're like, like Markdown, what are you talking about? <laughs> Bro, I mean, I would say that Capcom, that RE engine they have since Resident Evil 2 is phenomenal, man. They even use it in like Monster Hunter for like uh, the Rise. 
they, that, that engine is i don't know how they get so much detail with it they they got something special over there they're, they're making quality looking games i would i pass off to capcom they, they it looks monster really, hunter rise looks very pretty i know i know bro and that's just with 4k textures i can't wait for monster hunter war 2 to come out but that engine is always oh, yeah. nice man. dude it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be crazy so if like can resident evil be a masterpiece that's controversial right so i saw like the ign review was a 10 out of 10 and i said can that game be a 10 out of 10 if it's a remake like is that even possible like what what are we doing here like is, is a masterpiece like the first time it comes out or like if you just release it again is it still a masterpiece like that's what that's what i want to know like how do we feel about that you know? it's i'm mixed because when my the sure answer is yes but not full on yeah you know head you know head first into pool is first impressions to games are a massive selling point massive sure. skyrim there were so many game mechanics firsts i experienced in the skyrim that i will forever love that game and i've seen a lot of those things done since then another one being left for dead for I don't know if it's been out for 20 years. I just want to say the word good decades, plural. For decades, every single zombie game was described as Left 4 Dead but this, Left 4 Dead but that, Left 4 Dead but this. Arguably, maybe not Resident Evil, but you know what I'm saying? Saying there's just games that hit it and they're like the benchmark for that genre. And when you have a game like that that has a remake, it's still, if it, if it, if it is valid of the 10 out of 10, then it, then it earns it. Because, for example, the same game, Skyrim, I played the Skyrim, you know, I played the Skyrim um, remake and because that one was just a pure aesthetic, I would argue if people did do that, that 10th or 20th anniversary, whatever, um, the one that just came, the one that came out um, two years ago, 2000, it would have been, yeah, 10 years. If, if people did review the Skyrim 10th anniversary collection of 10 out of 10, I want to give it a 10. I would give it an eight or nine. Um, the game is again the game in itself holds up, but I feel like a lot of it, while playing it, gets nostalgia points for Skyrim. Whereas I feel like Resident Evil Four uh, remake, I don't have it have a hand hands on the de- haven't had hands on the demo, but if the gameplay and the tweaks, the changes that keep it fresh, while it's still you, can, you, still, you still get the nostalgia points like oh, I remember that, but they change it just enough. Like for example, Final Fantasy remake. Final Fantasy remake is changing some major stuff. But so there's the things that you still get those nostalgia points, but they keep it fresh and the, the game handles the way a 10 of 10 should. I think it's valid. And so that's why I think the 10 is valid because there are some remakes that are not worth it. But this one as merit alone, I haven't played it, but I believe it may be it may be worth a 10 of 10, even though it's a remake. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Arthur. I think when it comes to 10, obviously the criteria has to be much different than a normal game, right? It's because you already have the source material, you know, a remake, obviously it's not a remaster, right? They're literally building it from the ground up. They have the schematic, they have the blueprint, but it's not a, they're not just uh, cleaning up uh, the, the, the original old shaded graphics. They're, they're redoing everything that's had the blueprint. Um, but yeah, to your, to your point, Arthur, I think, uh, to me, I think if the numbers are there, it should be possible for it to hit. And I, I think uh, if, if it is still, if it is something where you feel like it's modern, but it still captures that essence, like you said, Arthur, nostalgic to when you first played it and what made Resident Evil 4 as magical. Because I feel like sometimes we have we have this this like uh this blinded nostalgia with certain games, right? Kind of like so like okay, remember Goldeneye. Like Goldeneye was one of those games that that spearheaded uh, first person shooters chains first person shooters was an amazing when we play it we play golden eye now we're like what the fuck is this right <laughs> this is t- like this play is terrible but ever but we all remember nostalgic wise this was an incredible game this changed this this changed this type of genre forever so for remakes today you know if it can still capture that essence of why it's so special, but put it in today's scenarios where the 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 graphics are you know, obviously the graphics, but the gameplay is improved and how they you know go through everything and develop everything. I think it's possible to do a a, a ten. Uh, obviously, not every masterpiece can can even hit that. You know what I mean? Um, 
but I, auto remix. Yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah, exactly. I don't think I don't think are there are there any tens from from those remix from any of them, like for five for instance. But that might have been a remaster, though. I don't even think that was considered a remake. Like, oh, say, yeah, like the four to five port. That's I, technically a remaster, right? I keep, yeah, I keep forgetting. I know that that's semantics, but there is a tweak. Yeah, um, like they, had, like, they had, like they had the first person view mode, but that was about like that was about it. I think. I can't. You're right. I can't think of any other. But I can give you another, another, another remake that didn't mm. hit the mark. Mm. Apples, apples. Resident Evil Three remake. Resident Evil mm. Two remake. Future size. Mm. Resident Evil Three remake. People weren't as happy, and so yeah. that's why. A lot of people are skeptic. Not a lot, but I'll say a concerned yeah. because all oh, they hit a bump in the road. Oh, Resident Evil Three remake wasn't as ooh, wasn't as good. Yeah. Um, but you know, with with again the foundation that Resident Evil Four did lay out, it would have been hard to not hit the mark. Because they, yeah. they missed it with they missed it with three, but it looks like they've definitely yeah. stuck the landing with four. Because I know because it's funny. I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm an oddball because three is my favorite one, but I know four typically is the most popular one out of all of them. Right. I mean, besides two, besides two, four, I would say. Um, but yeah, so I think they had a lot of pressure to, to hit, you know, to kind of hit that mark. But yeah, it would be interesting to play it to see, like, to, to identify. And I know they added a few things too. Like, they didn't just fully remake it and that's it. I know they added some additional side quests and things of that nature. There's an IGN article where it was like seven additional things they added for the game that weren't in the original Resident Evil 4. But. Uh, to answer your question, law in a long-winded way, <laughs> church, I think it is possible. Um, it's just the criteria is set up a bit, a bit different. But I'm probably still gonna wait till it's on sale. To your point as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. This is why we can't get sequels, guys. <laughs> so, like, like a ten out of ten is like a must-buy game. I can't wait, right? So for me, I I can't give RE for a 10 out of 10 just because it is in essence a remake it doesn't it's not a knock on it in terms of what the quality of what it is it's just like bro it's just like we know it's a 10 out of 10 from the gamecube age like you can't just we knew it was going to be great i had no doubt in my mind that uh, capcom was going to pull this off so to me it just can't i don't know if i can give it a masterpiece when it's like a master it's a re-edition it's like the Mona Lisa um in Europe. I forget what actually I don't even know what country the Mona Lisa is in is France, it? Louvre, Paris. Yeah, with the, yeah. Well they basically they're just touching up Baguettes. the picture, the painting ever so often, you know. That's yeah. how that's how I look at it. It just it, it can't be a ten, man. Uh it's a it's a nine, a nine point nine. Okay. Okay, maybe. <laughs> I mean, nah, it's, it's like an eight point nine, but like, that's like <laughs> I, it's it's weird because I get where you're coming from. I, I it's like yeah. I'm not gonna, I, I can't we gotta have a, we gotta have some standards, brother. Like you know, we gotta hold the ball up here a little bit, man. That's that's what I'm looking at. For me, it's for like me. no, you're not you're not you're not you're not wrong. That's what I'm saying. Like there's things that I, I disagree with, but like not as far back. Like uh, that's wrong. Um, it's again because also with drills, I don't want to say semantics, but he's right. I keep I I keep around I keep trying to mentally rattle off examples, but I'm thinking of remasters. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the best um, I think the best example for me. Sorry to cut you off, Arthur. Just no, that's what I get out of my brain before I lose it. Um, <laughs> um, the best example that I can think of, Church, that probably aligns with your thinking. It's slightly different because maybe it's more of a political thing, but the whole Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater thing, right? Like okay. there, like there's there's you know rumors to that they're gonna remake that. But if Ko not, but if Kojima, if he doesn't, if he's not a part of the project any way, shape, or form, I'm not giving that thing a ten out of ten. You know what I mean? Because it's like Leo. Kojima's not there. <laughs> yeah, like what the bro. fuck? What the fuck, bro? Like, like you're just gonna take his vid? Because Ko- remember, because we have to remember that Konami fired Kojima and took down fucking PT. Could be one of the greatest games that we've had. That was this amazing vision with Guillermo del Toro. Hey, we're gonna remake Snake here, guys. Buy it, like, I like love true Kojima. Ko- <laughs> but like Konami paid Kojima. To make one of the greatest games ever, he got paid to do it. That's he did his job. Nah, nah, <laughs> he nah. Gave you the money. nah. Da, Vin- da Vinci got paid for Mona Lisa. I mean, the, mo- <laughs> the money don't affect the, the money don't affect the crap. Nah, oh, man. Hey, man. Nah. We outsource but, this all the time. <laughs> I, drill, nah. drill, here, drill. I know where you're coming from because you and Kojima is me with a lot, like of all other things. We'll get we'll get into it. Like we'll get into it, but like not but like drill, not apples to apples, but like how you look at a game without Kojima. I look at a game with the presence with the presence of people, aka like 
Blizzard. We'll get into that. Um, <laughs> but, but like, dude, I, but I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. How like at heart too, that game cannot be a ten on ten. Um, but but yeah, my again, my you look thing at a is game just, like Final Fantasy VII remake. You know, that's like the seventh game, mm-hmm. but they we really all remaking it. Well, they they changed the story completely. You know, uh, went into that series, and that and that's just what Nomura does completely over there at Square Enix, and like to a point where it's its own game in its own right. You know, mm. it's a it's a prequel and a sequel all at the same time. That's a redo. That's not a remake. <laughs> it's a remake. No, it's you remaking. It's a remaking of the vision. You know, it's it's, it's a semantic. It it's it's semantics. <laughs> it gets tricky. It gets See, tricky. Bro, like to me, FS7 could be a 10 out of the game because it's a story diverged to something else. It's actually a sequel to Final Fantasy VII. Have you guys mm. played the remake, Final Fantasy VII remake? No, I haven't. Uh, I don't got it, Sony. Damn. No, bro, it's. it's alternate, got... The alternate reality edition. <laughs> bro, it's just like, it turns out to be a sequel to like Advent Children and the I'm original children. Final Fantasy seeing seven game at the same time. It's crazy, man. But. It's made by the guy who does Kingdom Hearts, and we all know that story's crazy. So, yeah, yeah. crazy. Complicated, I think you have a point. Uh, potato, potato. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think um, you have, I think you have a point. I think it is definitely a, a semantics notion, but I, I think I think you have a point. I think you have a point. My 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 thing is my thing is is just because we've just, we've seen so many both remakes and remasters miss the mark, and we jump on them at the bit to a point that's deserved. Um, but again, because we see so many miss the mark and not hit the landing, I think it's worth recognizing those that do. Again, that nine out of ten, ten out of ten thing. I've let just say what it is. I've seen a lot of tens that aren't. I've seen a lot of games that are not ten out of tens. Facts. But I feel like <laughs> if there's any, if it's any game that might, I think value of it, it it's Resident Evil Four for it to see how it can stand on its own with one the the updates coming, but not updates changes. Not as great as you know, Final Fantasy Seven, where it's a whole new sequel, but, <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm just sad, um, I'm just okay. sad that, uh, well, because there's, well, because it's not a spoiler, but they already released it. That that one, that one dog's dead. You remember before there was like a there was a dog that was alive. You could like save it. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Dog dead. Unplayable. <laughs> so how you gonna remake it into that shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what people are talking to. I love that when they show it's like dogs that unplayable, unplay, un- unplayable game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So um, speaking of, speaking of unplayable uh, or will not play, um, why don't you dive into uh, good old company Square Enix? Uh, and it looks like their ability to still try to convince people to play games involving blockchain and cryptocurrency. Um, it's funny. It shows a picture of Final Fantasy VII Remake, which we just talked about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but according to Yahoo, it says here, I'll read a snippet of this. It says, while seemingly every other game publisher has dipped its toe into the poison waters of blockchain gaming has quietly begun to pretend that it never happened, Square Enix wants you, or at least its investors, to know that blockchain games are still in the way. During the last month's financial results briefing session, which has been officially translated uh, an investor asked if the strength of Square Enix's games for 2023, which include Final Fantasy 16 and 7 Rebirth, is setting the company up for the, a downturn for the following fiscal year. Major title launches will not be concentrated solely in the coming year, President Yusuke Masuda responded. Matsuda said uh, the company has, uh, in quote, uh, organized our pipeline to keep a good spread of games coming. Uh, Matsuda concluded with this, in quote, we also hope that you look forward to the blockchain games we plan to launch, end quote, in the next fiscal year and hereafter. It's worth noting that these comments came before Matsuda replacement was proposed by the company board of directors. Um, although our friends at PC Gamer note that this likely replacement has, known, has its own background in NFT and Web 3.0 projects. Uh, lastly, that I'll mention here... Uh, it says, here's hoping that Square Enix maker of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest ends up winning out over Square Enix maker of The Quiet Man, Bound Wonderland, and whatever the hell blockchain game seems to believe uh, we want. Uh, Arthur, I'll start with you since you coined this uh, article. You know, what are your what are your thoughts around all this? 
otherwise still supporting it. There's a reason why that last guy got fired, uh, which also, which, uh, which also, I, I think, what, Joe, was it confirmed or supposedly? Um, well, we'll get back to that. Square Enix NFTs. No, kill it, blow it up, shoot in the face. <laughs> um, and speaking of Final Fantasy, you know, speaking of Final Fantasy, like they're gonna have Final Fantasy NFTs. I mean, like, I don't know what Square Enix is doing, man. Square Enix, Square Enix for me, minus the talk we just had about their amazing um, remake. I'm Final Fantasy 14. I, I don't know what they're doing with this game. I don't know why they're still investing it. The, the joke of NFTs has died. The you know the lonely monkey with the hat. No one's buying his stuff. NFTs are dead. We've seen better games that that are more finished get killed and xed. So how this one is still breathing is beyond me. How how Square Enix is still backing it, still going forward with this. I have I have no idea why. Now, now, question. Uh, side note, because I think we talked about this a little bit in the chat. Did they did they publish um, Forspoken? Did they publish that game? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because there is a rumor. What? There is a rumor that Forspoken cost almost a hundred million to make, and it was a failure. Like technically, it was a failure, right? So it's like you can't get normal games right. You guys want to do NFT games now? <laughs> you know, it was the B Studio, right? That made that game from Square Enix. Yeah, that's no. They're the publisher. They weren't the developer. They weren't. It wasn't forgot, their main, but it was. It was the yeah. I forgot who the dev team was. I'm gonna look it up right now. And Ooh. then, so, and then I guess Trail, not to like bring in too much, but are we gonna talk about all the other um corp and corp setting um Square Enix news? Because that's my thing. Is like it's all one big bubble for me. Well, I just want to say, I think NFTs are stupid. I can't believe Square Enix is like pushing it. Yeah. Um, it just never made sense to me in a video game, just because. I mean, NFT is in, in essentially supposed to be like long-term investing, right? It's a unique item that you kind of sell. And games come and go and die all the time. I mean, we look at every live service game that we have now, like a Division 2. It, it lasts a year or two maybe of content, and then it slowly, slowly fades away. So when the Ubisoft or Square Enix announced them, it's like, who's going to buy this NFT cosmetic that you're going to sell to somebody else four years down the line? Because well, that's a higher did. profit? Yeah, like I probably like it. It didn't make sense, you know. There's very few games that's you know that stand the test of time that are actively keep going with that possibly could work. But then it's like they already have some version of that in games already, you know. So it's like, and they're not NFTs. It's just, it just it kind of exists. It was just a stupid thing. Um, they just need to admit that they were wrong about the vision and just move on. Like gamers are not buying it. It, it doesn't make sense to anybody. So the. The future, the future for Square Enix for me, I am very nervous about. I know we're on the heels of Final Fantasy Remake. You don't be, man. Sony's going to buy them, bro. Gonna, I know we're on the heels of Final <laughs> Fantasy 16. But no, but like Square Enix for me, I, I, I'm hoping this new CEO shakes things up hard. They, I'm getting very, they are, they no are way. going hard into microtransactions. They've escalated it with this NFT, this NFT, NFT thing. They're, 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 they're two games ago they published. Um, they were moved from the store. Their last game, their last game is Forspoken, is an utter, is an utter failure. Um, I am very concerned for the future of Final Fantasy. Now, I was talking with y'all. I was talking to you guys off, like uh, in the chat, you know, off, off recording. For me, like Square Enix is starting to become the new Gearbox. Like, oh, that Gearbox is like, oh, uh, Borderlands. Just think Borderlands. Just think Borderlands. Just think Final Fantasy. Just think Final Fantasy. Just think Final Fantasy. And now, Final Fantasy, are, are, you know, definitely argue has more leeway, has more of a success, is a safer investment than milking. Milking Final Fantasy is, I would say, safer than milking Borderlands. But every other time recently, they've dipped their foot out of that. It's it hasn't been great. Avengers, Forspoken, the game the game who I whose name I can't remember because they've officially pulled it from stores. Um, the and here's the thing: it was Square Enix with Platinum. I I can see why that game never got marketed because if this was like ten years ago or like you know even six years ago, you're telling me Square Enix partnered with Platinum, I'll be screaming about that, hyped about that. And now we, now we saw what the result was. I don't know what they're doing, man. So I'm hope so I'm hoping they they change their they change their their plans beyond Final, like anything beyond Final Fantasy because they're, they're that's that department you're killing it but everyone else get together and figure it out. Yeah, well, I think I mean with Square Enix though, 
divesting like the a bunch of studios right they've always had a problem with the western like studios for square enix you know when they had the tomb raider ip and hitman ip both phenomenally critically acclaimed great games but they never met the sales expectations they wanted to meet it never sold as well as final fantasy or sales as well as of kingdom hearts and therefore they viewed it as a failure so they wanted to make the same hit with less money that the studios have and they eventually just separate them right that um, sounds like ea not, yeah. not a good that's not a good business plan well, i think i think culturally is just kind of different it is the expectations you know they didn't believe in these ips right because they were not necessarily you know japanese ips in my a humble opinion i um, mean you have a prestige like final fantasy you kind of believe in those things um so they got rid of all those studios. Um, even I think they got rid of the Forspoken Studios too. They saw that off. I think they're trimming the fat, making themselves look more appealable to buy. Um, I I think they're looking for somebody to sell, and I think that's what the CEO is going to do. They, I think they're going to sell to Sony. They've had a great business relationship over the years with the exclusive content. Um, even now, like Final Fantasy fourteen, a game that I love. Pull me back to PlayStation. You know, you can't find that shit on Xbox. Or I'll be playing it on Xbox. So um, I just think Square Enix is, is going to be okay. Um, but it, they're just a Square Enix and Kingdom Hearts machine right now. An Octopath Traveler <laughs> as well. So, you know. Yeah. I think... I was just uh, recap. Um, the, I was going to recap you. So again, real quick, to tie in again that's from my thing with Square Enix, I just, I said, just recap. Yeah. Over the past two weeks, within the past two weeks, like CO change. First spoken, developer absorbed, um, and then the news that are coming out the NFTs. I'm just like timing all that is not great. Again, for PR, it's not great. Yeah, I think I think, I think yeah, no, I, I I agree with you guys definitely. I I don't think NFTs are not it's not an interest for gamers. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, the 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 developers luminous productions uh for Force Spoken. So you know it's a shame that the game. You know, didn't do well, but I mean, you know, I mean, the game didn't do well. It's just kind of, it's kind of, this is kind of what it was. But as far as for Square Enix, I mean, we have to remember too. I think uh, Tencent owns a significant portion of Square Enix. I think it's thirty percent, if not more, that Tencent owns Square Enix, and I think this NFT push is from, it's from probably Tencent, uh, Tencent shareholders, you know, or stakeholders rather. Um, it's definitely a top down. I would guess that it's probably a top down initiative that they're trying to push this so hard. I really don't think Square Enix truly wants NFTs to be in games, or maybe they do because Ubisoft does, and that's another alarming thing as well. You know, Ubisoft is super for NFTs as, uh, in games, and you know the community just keeps shouting like we don't fucking care about this. We just want games that are good. Make games that are good. Start there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, and yeah, I think you are right, Church. As far as just you know, it being a Kingdom Hearts, Octopath Traveler, Final Fantasy machine, uh, they can't afford to fuck up on Final Fantasy for Square Enix. They just can't. They can't. You know what I mean? It's too. It's too huge of a. It's too big of a game. It's like Nintendo fucking up on uh, on Tears of the Kingdom. They literally can't afford to do it as a company. Um, it needs to be successful. So, um, yeah, I just. You know, it's because I think this, if if I'm not mistaken, this Square Enix uh, president or director, rather, that was, or CEO that was pushed out, uh, wasn't it for in, insider trading? I heard there was something to do about stock changes or insider trading, and, and that that's what that's what I was, that's what I was talking that's what I was talking about too. Hmm. Is I was making a joke of like, oh man, this guy Martha Stewart got something in common. Um, right, exactly. But, yeah, but. The the fact he got pushed out for insider training, for me, again, it was almost like I forgot because if you're going to tell me this guy made all these bad decisions, he gets pushed out. I'm like, that makes sense. That's a smart decision. Oh, they only pushed him out because he had insider trading. So wait, if he didn't have insider trading, would he still be a CEO? You know what I mean? Because um, and, and, and Jarrell, I totally forgot. You know, I was talking about microtransactions and, and, and NFTs. I totally, and the second you said 10 cent, it all clicked. I totally forgot. Ten, you know, ten, everything 10 cent touches just gets tainted and and blocked and blocked, you know, by a paywall. Yeah. Um, they had a, they had a choco, they had a notorious ch- like a chocobo game, just rancid with microtransactions. Um, Avengers, Avengers showed it's on your shell of microtransactions. Um, and then other games even without microtransactions, like Forspoken, and the other game whose name I honestly forget and is off the sore. <laughs> um, no microtransactions, but just bad games. 
Um, yeah. for, and then, and then for Spoken, again, just um, for the closure of Forspoken, that developer um, got absorbed back into Square Enix. It's back home. Hmm. Hmm. So, again, I, that's, again, for me, that's just, I get, that's get that vibe of Gearbox, just milking Borderlands. I want to say more of milk. I, or Gearbox, I'll say, was definitely milking Borderlands. Like, I love Borderlands, but when they made the, the, the prequel, that prequel game, I thought it was fun, but even I, who was a diehard Borderlands fan, didn't ask for it. I was like, oh, okay, I'll yeah. play it. It's a fun game, but I, I mean, I didn't ask for it. Um, where so it's not about it's not apples apples because I wouldn't say uh, Square Enix is milking Final Fantasy too much, even though there's an NFTs out. But as for games, I would say it's less milking, or like they just need to keep they need to focus on it. Gearbox definitely milking Borderlands, Square Enix not in the milking category yet for me. But yeah, they're again they're. Their uh, their other adventures when they, they get out of their lane when they get out of their lane of Final Fantasy, they don't do well. Yeah, and you know, and you know that I don't know if you guys saw the Yoshi P interview when it came to FF16 a few uh, weeks ago. Um, basically, you know, he's talking about his uh, his idea for FF16, how they're treating it is that he wants this game, Final Fantasy, the IP, to be a must buy again because he feels when you see a Final Fantasy title, it it no longer has the must buy component so that's why um the devil may cry you know gameplay developer the fighting mechanic guy when he left capcom square enix picked him up and that's why ff16 is a fighting game like dmc basically it is, it is not a party driven game um it is focused heavily on combat it's going to be uh, more bayonetta uh dante and a platinum style game more than anything. It, they're switching up oh, the entire wow. formula. It's a singular focus on a character, and the combos look sick. I mean, I, I love those type of games. So they're taking a fresh approach to it for to gather a new audience and get a more story driven perspective. Because you know, maybe people don't like the quote unquote turn based RPG anymore. Um, so that means it's serious, and I I think that's what they need to do is yeah. make more final fantasy games but in different genres like let's take the fantasy elements that we love and try to you know put it in a spin on it you know and we'll see what happens you know I, I, the action game i think is going to be really fun so that, that's a great i'm, I'm glad you I like I'm, I'm glad you brought that up church because uh i think they're right as far as them really needing to 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 move away from turn base like i think it i think there was a point in time where the 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 standard that portion of the gamer population was like yeah this is what it is but now that things have changed graphics and stuff as well technology it's like look people want to see action like more action right and turn base just you know when when people think of turn base, they think of now like Age of Empires. Or we're the same turn base, it's real time strategy, but still yeah. incorporates turn base. But uh, yeah, I I think I think that is a smart thing to do. It kind of reminds me of um, and correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like Final Fantasy Lightning was one of the first Final Fantasies to really kind of like kind of yeah. play with that action base, yeah. right? I mean, I would even go back to thirteen a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, where it's more singular focus on lightning a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, the lightning returns. I think you're probably referencing a little bit, though. Yeah, I, correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they um they played with it though, and even for in fifteen we saw that a little bit more. So mm-hmm. they've been slowly transitioning the audience. Um, I mean, FF seven two remake as a wonderful fighting system to me, right? And it's completely action based. So now they're going all the way in, and just to get the guy who does Devil May Cry. Um, I don't know if you guys are DMC five fan like that should is amazing yeah. so uh, the gameplay just watch ff16 man if you guys haven't seen the chance yet it's, mm. it's phenomenal looking like that that's all up my alley so definitely but, yeah yeah one of my favorite show, games to that. watch and play growing up <laughs> Don't make yeah, dude, they even he even announced um <laughs> that once you beat the story mode of ff16 there will be a harder version to go replay the game where they'll introduce new enemies and then you will have a scoreboard for how fast you can beat the missions on a worldwide similar to devil may cry too so they're, they're flipping it on its head completely so it's everything you love about final fantasy but with that you know devil may cry flair that you have going on so nice. dude no problem everything you said everything you said is like hits all those platinum itches that the rest yeah. that all of us have and i was laughing because i'm like Jarrell, far cry 
Skyrim with guns. <laughs> uh, right. Final Fantasy 16, Devil May Cry, both dragons. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and and that and that's sword good guns. <laughs> and that's a good ad campaign. Nice I mean, it <laughs> dude, those I mean those campaigns or those quote those taglines, it worked for Far Cry. It did. You know, on the heels on the heels of Skyrim, you're like Skyrim but guns. Go on. And then, you know, we're, you know, and again, we're talking about Platinum Games. Their last game's off the store. And a Platinum Games, Devil May Cry, is more than nostalgia. It has quality behind it. Um, it has quality behind their name. It has respect on their name. Um, and so to, to, to everything, again, for everything you're saying, because I haven't looked too much into it, again, because I, I hate Final Fantasy, I just have a PS5. I'm not looking too much into a game I won't be able to buy or won't buy. Um, but, again, I'm hearing all these things that make me think of Platinum games, Devil May Cry, combos, ranking systems, new game plus, replaying it just to do better for the sake of doing better. Like that, you're like, replay play through, but it's harder to do enemies. Mm. Dude, that's good. That's good. Because again, because yeah. again, I'm because again, I'm a guy who is, again, not hating on Square Enix, but I'm cautious. I'm sad. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm cautious and I'm like scared of like where their focus is going. Like, hey, why are you guys doing NFTs? So again, so to know that they are putting that time, putting the investment and the right choices um yeah. like directive choices behind final fantasy 16 oh man hey 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 i doubt it but if that is the game to get me to get looked into a ps5 you'll hear me it's because the way church described it and that's what i need that's what gamers need we need gamer friends to tell us because we know we know our own audience we know each other right yeah yeah you know, so so again some churches us rounding off like platinum game stuff and a final fantasy 16 game i'm like go on you speak in my language <laughs> See a Sony shirt under a church's yeah. shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it works with Jim Ryan. <laughs> yes, <we are>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fan box. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll uh, oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll say real I'll say real quick how me how like I'm just like the constant like advertiser for Game Pass. Church love here like Mr. Sony. And again, and again in the constructively. You know, like church is like, hey, again, I'm trying to yeah. sell church and game pass and like and church just I know me like hey Final Fantasy sixteen, I'll keep an eye out for it. I mean you know, what is yeah, it mean? Yeah. again, will it be worth me buying a five dollar PS five? But hey, I'm hearing great things for a company I just said I'm cautious about. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad. Well, hell, I'm glad. I need to be I need to be converted too because clearly I don't have the fucking console because I'm sorry. Ma, I want Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't give me no remake of that Kojima. Um, <laughs> anywho, uh, so moving on here. Uh, so speaking of studios and whatnot, we've been mentioning, uh, and new studios keep uh, forming bit by bit. Uh, there's a new studio that recently was announced, uh, and this is according to Video Games Chronicle. Uh, it says three former uh, Blizzard leads have set up a new AAA studio uh, titled Magic Soup Games. It was a very cute logo. Uh, it says here in uh, on the article, it says here, quote, Jen O'Neill, J. Allen uh, Brock, and John Donham each had senior roles at Blizzard, among other studios, over the course of their careers. In this statement, the trio said that Magic Soup will see them, in quote, drawing on decades of experience to build original AAA games uh, that are genuinely uplifting and inclusive for players around the world, end quote. Says O'Neill, who is in the studio CEO, said John or Jay, John, and I have similar ideas about the types of games we want to make, and we're tightly aligned on the company goals and principles, so this was a natural fit for us. Uh, we know the quality of our games will be a reflection of our team culture. We're doing the work uh, front up front uh, to make sure we're fostering creativity, full remote collaboration, and a diversity of backgrounds. It says, between them, the trio have worked and led on teams behind franchises such as World of Warcraft, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, EverQuest, Diablo, and Skylanders. It says, Brock was the president of Blizzard until it was announced in 2021 that he would be leaving the company to pursue new opportunities. Um, end quote. So, Arthur, before we talk about Magic Soup games, uh, you posed a really good point that I went ahead and dug deep into all of our episodes that talked about the announcement of new studios. Oh, the super team list. So, um, I'll, I'll name all the teams, but there's from the beginning of our podcast, <laughs> there's oh. been seven new studios, and damn near half of them are former Blizzard employees, which I find <laughs> which I find very interesting. So you have Magic Soup Games. 
which is uh, three former Blizzard, as we as we I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. You have Wildlight Entertainment, which we talked about in a previous episode, former Apex Legends and Titanfall employees. You have Lithios, uh, which is the Days Gone uh, nasty man, and one of the last of his creators to create that NFT game that nobody wants. Uh, you have Dreamhaven, which is former Blizzard Studio employees. You have Frost Giant, former studio employees. You have Twin Sons, which is the super one that we talked about. The first one, the first one of the first big ones, Remember and that. that and that is from Halo Four, former creative director, Hitman producer, and a Gears of War former producer as well. Uh, and then the last studio, which has been unnamed, I don't think they gave the actual name of the studio, but uh, it was former Square Enix Quantum Dream employees, and then someone from Assassin's Creed Valhalla as well. So I find it really interesting that we just have these studios from, you know, these big head corporations that are like, fuck it, let's do it our way, right? And they create these studios. Now, obviously, my first hope is that we actually see something from these (laughs) companies, right? Obviously, games take a long time to make, uh, and we want these games to be successful, especially when it's kind of backed in this notion, you know, kind of like a coffee stain productions, for instance, um, like where we have a uh, Valheim and things like that. Um, but yeah, I just think it's interesting that damn near half of this list is blizzard employees. They're like, let's just do it on our own. But, uh, what are your thoughts church? Let me throw it to you about people making video games i don't just just just, just as far as the magic soup you have magic soup games right Mm -hmm. and they're the third uh company any base company formed together uh out of this list of seven uh seven studios half of them are from one company i just think that's really interesting you know what i mean yeah i mean i don't know i get it's just like yo is blizzard like a good wolf place and that's why maybe people are leaving from droves but i feel like video game studios are popping up all the time so like i don't know it's necessary to focus on those seven um but my initial thoughts is that this is good for the industry i love that the tools are getting more accessible to each people because there's a feel that you know the big corporations will gobble up all these studios that we love with the acquisitions right but this just shows you that you know when people love games you know build it and they will come like we can have more developers creating more ips uh and giving us more content over the time so i think it's cool and i think it's technology got to such a good place that you don't maybe need the to go through the traditional means anymore it could just be you and your homie and you know you know in the house you know we've seen that with uh super meat boy um team cherry uh when it comes to hollow knight as well it's like that's just three people or i think pez was made by one person as well so yeah. Uh, that's kind of like my thoughts on it, man. I mean, yeah. I know you guys don't like Blizzard and Activision, so like <laughs> you guys are just like well, yeah, apparently, yeah, apparently we're not, apparently we're not the only fucking ones. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know you know, sometimes you just want to create your own thing. We don't know if they left because they didn't like it, but you know maybe they wanted to create something they were passionate about, man. You know? Maybe they don't want to walk into the Cosby Suite. You don't know. <laughs> nah, man. Nah, man. No, I'm not I... gonna necessary soon something negative bro when... no that wasn't my point my point was just the, the the cool thing as far as having instead of having a big corporation make a bunch of games that we don't fucking want or that suck ass is that we <laughs> have is that we have these indie dev teams that are making games that people want you know yeah. what i mean like 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 he said the pez game that one person made mm-hmm. you know like 12 minutes that was like one or three people and it was yeah. a great game you know what i mean like the fact that these little these these small smaller companies making great games like i think that is really astounding the reason why i mentioned the list is because those are all those are all uh studios that we've talked about on the show that we're forming so the three years of the of the podcast being together those are all the studios we've mentioned in our news article so that's the reason why we focused on those seven but i agree with you as far as it being a positive thing i think it's great you know what i mean outside of outside of whatever's happening with Activision blizzard just the fact of new studios and 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 in all essence, uh, I, I want these people to do well. Like I want to, I want to, I want to cover more information about these studios making great games for us to play. You know what I mean? So I think that hey. in general is a, a cool wave, you know, yeah. happening. But Arthur, what are your, what are your any any thoughts in general? First of all, dude, thanks for doing that deep dive and finding those. Because like I said, because all the time we keep talking about like, oh, it reminds us of that time that people left and did that. Because yeah. people, it reminds us of the time that people left and did that. And again, you know, 
Um, and again, when it comes to me, you know, joke Activision Blizzard, I've been joking on it, but at face value, you know me, I love indie. So when I hear stuff like that, of like people leaving for reason X, Y, and Z, at face value, you know, we get we get more indie we get more in, indie devs, um, in the business that are betting betting on themselves because arguably, um, again, for someone who, from the outside looking in, the game industry seems very contract based. And depending how your product is, you know, it really affects the payout or the success of your company, how, you know, if it's going to close or not, or declare bankruptcy. So to see people really, again, betting on themselves for them, you know, for the, their, their new passion, um, I'm happy for it. Again, thanks for doing that feedback. Because again, we all the time, it's like, man, that's a good life time. Oh, yeah, another no company, yeah, the I was company. scrolling through. <laughs> Let's go. So Let's I used to. Uh, because that's the question I, I used to always say to you all. It's like, oh, man, we should really look into that. So thanks for doing that. We're putting the legwork in there. Appreciate that. You know, how to scroll through, I'm guessing, 98 episodes. <laughs> um, luckily, I did, I, luckily, most of these I, I had in the description. So half the work I already I cut out for myself. There's only two where I was like I had to scroll through a little bit to find out, but it was all good. <laughs> well, as I would say, good job. Good job, past Rail. Good job, past me. <laughs> um. So again, for the legwork on that, I appreciate that. But again, to like the article itself, just as its own merit, um, again, I'm, I, I'm not, you know, going to happy and celebrate the reasons X, Y, and Z they left. But again, I love indie. Like you're talking about coffee stain. I love, I love when I heard, you know, when I heard a coffee stain was getting, you know, getting, getting more investing for Valheim because I fell in love with Deep Rock Electric. I'm not going to, you know, you know, you know, praise something I praise every time, but you know, um, in that example. Game Pass got me onto Deep Rock Galactic, which got me onto, onto Coffee Stain, which you were you were talking about. I was like, hey, I know Coffee Stain. They, they do Valheim. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So like the yes. Joe saying, I do want the best for this company. I do want the best for these people. I do want the best for these devs. Um, the church was saying, you know, all these indie devs wanted to go group of one or group of three being successful. I still say my, one of my most recent favorite moments of the, the, game, the, the Game of the Year awards was either last year or the year before that drill one among us one and it was like those three people on a zoom call like losing their mind and i love that i love to see that i love to see those people like you know even in their garage living off ramen you know on you know um well i don't love to see that but <laughs> well, okay, well, no, I, I, the I, end I, result of them winning yeah, yeah I, love, I, I, you know, I love to see people struggle <laughs> it's like, wait, 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 what are you saying no, here? I, I, was, I was i was pausing so i was pausing because you know like michael scott i thought just i just start talking and the sentence would just come to me uh, <laughs> um but what i'm saying is i love to see that their effort and their again like saying i don't want to say bravery but you know courage to to leave arguably a you know consistently paying job to just freelance in this competitive market and to to again to like the people of among us and pez everyone we mentioned the windows accolades so you know get that financial success um so again kind of piggyback on what you guys are saying i'm happy for this i wish them success i can't wait to see what they do i can't wait to play their game and i hope to hear more from magic suit because yeah. it sounds like the people behind this for the people behind a lot of the blizzard titles and things I did like before um, they started making things I didn't like. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping these are some of the devs that put their passion, the projects into the games before Tencent came around and tweaked Blizzard is the word I'll politely use. Um, but um, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, hoping the best for them. I can't wait to see what they do. Right on. And speaking of Blizzard, and fried chicken. Uh, <laughs> according to IGN, uh, the title of this article here is People are freaking out about KFC's Diablo 4 beta codes, which the beta kicked off today, March 17th. Uh, so just to read a little bit of this article here. It says, in quote, uh, Diablo, uh, Blizzard fans are freaking out about the only way to access the long-awaited Diablo 4 beta other than pre-ordering or ordering KFC. Or pre-ordering Cullen ordering KFC. So it says as the beta kicks off today, uh, hopeful players are taking the game's Reddit uh, to express their surprise, frustration, and amusement over the KFC beta code promotion. Some users are ordering KFC simply for the beta code with no intention to eat the chicken sandwich, while some are protesting it altogether. This, this is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> KFC's tweet uh, says, in quote, buff up your gameplay, di hashtag Diablo 4. Uh, beta access now available with the purchase of a double down via KFC app or on KFC.com. Good luck, heroes. Uh, it says, Reddit user 
posted and quote anti-vegan beta key <laughs> post why asking why the only way to access deal force beta other than pre-ordering is to order a dead chicken from kfc <laughs> another user falls into the latter category saying quote just order my kfc chicken sandwich with the diablo promotion they said question do we actually have to pick up the sandwich to get the code <laughs> So this is the beta code is available to anyone in the United States who orders a double dent sandwich or other valid options, though vegan or vegetarian meal is absent from your list. This is Diablo 4 launches June 6th of this year. Uh, a game on my fantasy card, I might add. <laughs> uh, Arthur, uh, are you planning on ordering KFC to potentially play the beta? Uh, no. If, if you'd <laughs> asked me any other time in my life, I would have jumped on this, but I'm trying try to save trying to save money. I know it's, it's rare for me, but um, I gotta say shout out to all the gamers that are supporting KFC workers and getting free food by not picking up their lunch. Uh, with that right. being said, someone who had, who I sounds like has hands on experience with said uh, feeding of the people. Uh, Church, uh, how are your your thoughts? Um, <laughs> yeah, man, I I was not gonna play the Diablo 4. I didn't want to pre-order. You know, I got blown with Battlefield 2042, but my brother called me. He's like, yo, man, did you hear about this KFC thing? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? He was like, you just buy a sandwich. You get access to the beta. So I went on my little internet, went to KFC.com, hmm. ordered a sandwich, didn't even pick up the sandwich. <laughs> 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 I placed an order, didn't even put up the sandwich. Nothing whatsoever. Nice. Uh, 20 minutes <laughs> later, I got my code. I redeemed it, and I've been playing uh, Diablo 4 today, um, actually. Um, How do you like it so far? Or is it um, just the beta that, right? Yeah, it's just the beta. Um, so I do like it. I have a positive exceptions. Like, I've only played Dila Diablo Immortal and maybe an hour of Diablo 3. Um, but this game, what I loved about Immortal, this game seems to have, it, it looks good. Um I'm hoping it looks a little bit better. Like, what's really cool is that you actually have in-game cutscenes now when you talk to people, mm. and it's, like, what your character model looks like, too. So you can, like, there's, like, a little fidelity of actually when you're playing, and then there's a higher fidelity of your character when you're in there a little bit. Um, but the game feels good. I'm I'm playing as a barbarian. Um, the controls feels nice. It makes sense. Um, the UI is easier to read. Um, I'm hoping on the retail version of the game, I can customize the UI a little bit more. I just kind of want the screen to zoom out, um, so to speak. I'm not playing it on a TV. I'm playing it on, like, a monitor. So I I've seen PC players have, like, the screen out a little bit more, just what you expect. Um, but that's just from a console perspective. I'm playing on the Series X. Oh, okay. The game is fun, man. If you can get into it, long yeah. queue times. I waited about 110 minutes to get into Ooh. the game it was bad and then it's a beta so you you just playing the game you could disconnect it and right. then you have to come back wait another 70, 70 minutes you God know damn. at the okay. same time so yeah i mean sometimes it's faster maybe it's just 40 minutes in reality but um they're working on the connectivity issues right um, i don't know why people are outraged it's a beta man like pre-order the game or buy piece of chicken but right wait until next weekend when the beta is available to everybody and everybody can play right so, right and probably shorter wait times too like in essence right they'll probably have i mean that's why we have a beta right for them to fix these these load times and for them to clean this up you know it's funny part of me thinks like wow like i didn't know how many people were vegan that were <laughs> diablo players, players bro. you know what i mean i'm like man maybe they didn't maybe they didn't identify the demographic right because they're like why would they market to someone that isn't a part of that demo you know yeah, and like it's like we all know KFC ain't real meat, and so it's like, well, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> like, Horse buy, meat or some buy. shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I hear it. I don't understand the outrage. Um, mm. maybe because I don't want to buy. You could buy any sandwich, I guess. So, but eh, well, you know, it's okay. But the game is fun. I cool. like it so far. I'm like level eight, so nice. Yeah, well, that. I'm glad. I mean, that kind of answers my other question too. As far as like when you get the code, you can choose a console or a PC as far as for the beta. Yeah, exactly. So nice. it shows you what you want to redeem it for, what platform. So smart. 
Yeah, and then you can just, you know, redeem it at that point. If you now they put they put a line in the sand. You want buffalo sauce, you get a PC code. You want barbecue, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> Sony. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yes. other than that, yeah, man, it's, it's been cool. So are you guys going to pick up a sandwich? I mean, Arthur said no already. What about you, I'm Joe? trying to save money. If I get a side, if I get just a side of... If I, <laughs> I'm going to save my $6. <laughs> oh. He just bought a bunch of headsets. <laughs> oh, That's like five beta keys. <laughs> oh. All right, man. Okay, okay. What That's about funny. you, bro? You I was going to say, yo, if I can get a side of mac and cheese and get a code, I'm, 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 I'm Gucci. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have to buy a sandwich, man. You have to buy a sandwich. Uh, That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. I probably I probably just do what everyone else did, buy uh order it and not even eat the sandwich, just use code, you know. So here, here here's my thing. It's like, dude, this isn't a pre order. You get a beta code. I'm working I'm working this weekend. I got I got stuff to do. So I don't want to spend some bucks to spend on an eight hour beta, realistically. And I apparently have an hour of that being being the experience of Blizzard's lovely servers or load time. So for me, on face value, like a, a, a sandwich for six hours of gameplay that, that done the time limit, I'm like, ah, I'll catch the open beta. I'll I'll will I'll be willing to wait for the open beta and not spend the money to experience the same limited gameplay because I got stuff going on. You spend more movie, money on like a movie ticket for less time. I ain't going to the movies. <laughs> 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 movies are expensive. I ain't, I ain't going to the movies. You just bought there, man. I was going to say, you just okay. bought three headsets. <laughs> no, man, like, I just, I, I went over that. Cause there was a break I, know, like, I know, like, I know, I know, I know. I know, technology's hard, I get it. <laughs> you know, if someone slashed my tires, be like, man, you bought four new tires. I, no, we're tires. laughing at your logic where you're just like, man, I was trying to save money, but you just spent money. <laughs> well, right. I, I just get something broke. It's something broke, you got to replace it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, well, I mean, as far there's always, you know, when it comes to, what companies hate for people to do is to wait because when you wait you save money so i completely understand that you know patience is the virtue as they say um sorry days gone too guy i'm virtuous I fail. <laughs> i'm not gonna spend i'm not gonna spend six bucks on six hours of a demo um so as in the when it comes to the actual beta um i haven't played it but i've been seeing a lot of stuff blizzard opinions aside immortal opinions aside game Diablo 4. From what I've seen as a guy who's played Diablo, I'm seeing good things. Not great mm -hmm. things, not 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 five stars, but I'm seeing good things. A couple things. You don't get interrupted um by when you're reviving somebody when you get hit. That used to be a thing. So by the way, Diablo's known not you know Diablo's known for not only doing a 1v1. No, Diablo's known for having 30 people attack you. So to be interrupted for us like a half <laughs> you know half of one health point you're all oh, you're 99 percent resing your friend too bad uh, uh you know a goblin fart on you revive you know you have to start the whole res again so that's that, that's something i'm that's something i'm liking um something else um the um, console thing that church spoke on i've been seeing similar complaints and valid if you watch people playing the beta right now on pc and xbox <laughs> it's not looking like the same game um the hud oh. Oh, hold on. Um, in it, terms of graphics, a little bit. It's not I mean, a horrible graphics project. on console. It, it doesn't look bad. Console graph. No. If you say it looks like Diablo three, I it, don't believe in that. Yeah, it doesn't look like that. The graphics are pretty good. I just want the camera to come out. It's like I don't think mm -hmm. it's bad graphics whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like it, it it's, you, yeah. you're not wrong. It's not bad. It's just when you compare it to PC, it's noticeably better. And here's the thing I'll say to that: Where have you been? <laughs> I'm a game releases for PC and a console. So especially for Blizzard. So even again, as a game, that doesn't shock me. When people say, Oh, are they yeah? I'm just like, one, again, I'm trying to ignore, you know, my other, you know, like kind of like, you know, Jarrell and his his, his thoughts on Kojima, you know, so his, his thoughts on Konami. So, you know, stained because Kojima on the same way with Blizzard. But again, the um, so again, the graphics again are not arguably, I think the graphics are not arguably bad. People are saying it looks to like copy and paste Diablo 3 on console. I don't agree with that. Um, I do think it's valid, Church. I, I saw that. I didn't play it, but I saw that. I did think even for me, a, Diab a Diablo player, it's way too far zoomed in for Diablo. Because Diablo. Here's, here's a couple other things. Speaking of that, Church, why the zoom in is going to be very concerning, gameplay-wise. Um, so again, Diablo is known for having mobs attack you. 
um, they can open doors now. Now that sounds relatively meh, but Diablo is a type of game where you're either steamrolling an army by yourself or one dude kills you in half a second. That's just what Diablo's next type of Diablo gameplay is known for. You're either just steamrolling over the, the whole world or one dude spawns with a million buffs that can debuff you like crazy and just nuke you. So before you used to heal up, you could used to kind of plan your attack and then go in a room. No, it's just go, go, go. So difficulty wise, I think that adds an unnecessary, unnecessary skill to it because Diablo wasn't the most tactical, but that did add a, add a sense of pa, you know, a sense of you know pausing, plus also pausing the game because it's a live service. You cannot pause the game, so you gotta go bathroom, figure it out. <laughs> Whereas before, rooms would give that break for you. Um, another thing I thought that was odd, but in, in from- practice, like they're not, and we don't go too deep in the dungeons because I've been playing it. It's not like. Mm-hmm. The mob from like f- three floors down is gonna come up to get yeah. you. You can kill an enemy and still have break. I, I definitely did just use the restroom in between. <laughs> yeah, I, with my brother. Yeah. So like, it's not it's not a nuisance. Um, but it it, it seems so far it, it doesn't seem to be a problem as early as I am into it. But go ahead, continue off though. Yeah. Um, the other thing I thought that was really weird. Um, again, these are specifics. But again, this is coming from a guy who's Diablo. Um. There's so the concept of a mimic is not new, a chest that can be, you know, possibly an enemy. Um, some games give hints where you can tell to mimic, some games don't, whatever. Um, in this game, shrines can be a debuff or what they call a curse. Um, but what a curse means in this game, it's weird because I don't think it's a curse at all. Um, a shrine that can buff you may spawn a bunch of mobs. Yeah, um, that that's happens. new, that's that's a relatively new thing. So shrines, that's a new thing to shrines. So the reason I'm going with that, that's the thing else that's new that I, a lot of people like me are kind of curious how they're going to do this is healing wells. It's, you know, we all know what we all know, you know, a red, you know, red bottle, red bottle heals your life, blue bottle heals your mana, right? You see a big tub, a tub of, you know, red healing well, it's going to heal you. They have a new thing called a cursed well, where it's a chance for, it's a chance for the cursed well. The thing is where like all people like me, that I don't know why, it's because as of right now, from what we what we know, it's not confirmed, but these are just people talking about it playing the beta, is we don't know if there's a way to tell if there's going to be a cursed well. So to have something that would normally heal you, potentially damage you, that's a, that's a people already talking about going to be a big problem late game. Because again, late game, that's when you get a lot more of these characters that can nuke you. I mean, you're alive and you're dead. You're, you're, not, you're not battling, you're alive, you get touched, you die. That's just how some fights in Diablo go. So imagine if you you barely escape this, you, know, you don't have a heal push, you're trying to heal, oh, healing well. Boom, it spawns from our guys, you're dead. So, and the thing is, what people don't know yet is if there's a way to tell, you know, for example, like um, poison food in games. You see a chicken, great, pixelated chicken means health. Pixelated green chicken, poison food, don't eat it. Um, so again, these are these are specifics, but these are things that are good that concern me because that's just what I, these are the type of things I'm looking for, the actual hard changes from Diablo 3 to 4. Um, again, not huge gripes, just not, I'm not a big fan of that. Or at least, at least I'm curious how it's gonna be implemented. Because again, if you know you're late game, if if you're playing late game, again you're trying to not get nuked left and right, and all of a sudden, oh, you try to heal yourself. Nope, surprise, you're dead. Um, so I hope they have like an annotation to tell, because that's kind of like something gamer. Like I would say that's something gamers are used to. Like oh, you know, you know, um, even like Minecraft meat, poison meat. You can tell. It's like or rotten meat. I should tell you. Um, but. That's kind of it in terms of specific changes I, I saw, but I I will say of all the specific changes I noticed, the resin thing I'm super happy about. It was really annoying to get 99% of your friend healed, sorry, rezzed, and one of the 10 people attacking you hits you, you got to start all over. So to not have res interrupted while you're um, being hit, I'm happy for that. Um, I just want to add, dude, the game looks really amazing. The details and the environments I've seen so far. Um nice. It just it it just does. I'm like it definitely doesn't look like three. It's more detailed. Um, you, it's easier to sell your junk. I can just mark it. I like the inventory system. Now I've only played the inventory system off for like, you know, immortal. So and that was I wouldn't say it was cumbersome, but here, like, there's it's a loot based game. So I'm glad when I'm looking through loot, I can easily see the pieces I have and just hit X. And if they just put a line through the entire gear so you know what exactly it is that's an x and then you can switch it out on your carriage on the fly it's very easy to see what you got brand new and it's very easy to, to determine 
um, what is more powerful at the given moment until you start getting to the builds, you know, later in the game. Um, other than that, it just, it plays really well. I'm like, I'm like, I like what I have. It feels right. The combat feels fun. The enemies on screen look amazing. And I played some of the, um, I guess, real world events or the, the stuff are happening. I don't know if that's new to the Diablo series, so to that speak. Is. Yes, and that's been fun. So I like I just go over there and I got like six other people trying to attack this one thing and just destroy this, you know, boss that just spawns in the middle of the map. The map is, you know, open war now. You can go anywhere from the very beginning. Um, and the map is huge, huge and very detailed. Um, I just made it to the first town that I'm in. I don't know how much the beta is gonna allow me to go. I, I think you get to level twenty or twenty five in the game. Twenty five. Uh, twenty five, yeah. Um, it's fun. I mean, and then if you get to the high level in the game, you get like ex exclusive like items that when you finally buy the game, it comes over. So that's the incentive to play if you guys want to hop on it. Um, but oh, so yeah. your so your progress your progress converts over to the full game? No, no, no. Oh. You just you you know it's not the progress. It's just that you get items from doing the beta, like cosmetic oh, okay. stuff, kind of stuff. So you can have something that like. Hey, I was here, you know, the founder's edition, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. But, yeah. I if miss you know, back in the day, you, man, where your progress but, would convert over, man. But, that was it's, back it's, in the day. It's from Diablo, man. Like, the whole point yeah. of the game is to keep playing it over and over again, right? Especially when the seasons come out. If D Diablo 3, you, you're playing the same missions. So, like, does it really matter if it carries? Like, we're going to run it, like, ten times. Like, it does if you call it a beta. It's a demo. Yeah, I mean, but, like, the nature of the game, it's, like, semantics if you do if you, if you had a roguelike for a beta bro like you, you know what i'm saying bro yeah the no, i feel you i feel you run it i'm just know? petty bro i'm just used to i'm just used <laughs> to the stuff converting well, over it. I, feel you. It's a, I mean it, it's again none of you're wrong but not, again you're both right in your own way but again something we are uh used to Jarrell, the game you know the game that we both played a demo of like we're buying it right now outriders outriders did that you know yeah, yeah um yeah, you know. and uh, I, 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 oh my gosh <laughs> church came to fight today no, boy. No, I'm just no, not where is it now again i'll say that i'll say this if our orders wasn't a live service game it would have been praised way more because again because when you because when you hear phrases it wasn't like, a live service game huh it was not a live service game oh, oh, yeah, it was. okay either way I yeah. still liked it. I had fun. I thought the story. I thought the story was better than it needed to be. I came into it just running, gun, oh. blow, blow okay. things up. I I still oh, thought the fun. plot and the story like kill it. Like so don't play times. it after. Don't play it after playing Gears of War because you. Because you... <laughs> <laughs> um, we're like, yo, this recoil is crazy. <laughs> Dude, right, I was like, why am I getting shot at right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I will say real quick for Arbiters, it's on Game Pass now. There are multiple times Caleb and I were like playing this game for the action and for the gameplay, and when when we came to cutscenes of the story, we we're both saying like, the story has no business being this good. Like when you get into the origin yeah. of like the the planet and the civilization, it gets crazy. I'm just I'm just saying yeah. uh, that's my thing. My real quick. Um, but for but for Diablo, um, you guys, go ahead. If Xbox gets this acquisition. Are you guys gonna play Diablo Four? Is that something you guys interested in playing, or is it because oh, of yeah. Blizzard? Okay, okay, okay. I'm I will not play it. it. I'll tell, I'll tell you that I'm not ordering. I'm I'm yeah, and I'm no, I'm, I'm super I'm <laughs> I'm super brand new to the to the Diablo world. So like oh I mean, man, so this would be my first jump in. Like I haven't played any. Yeah, they're playing Diablo Town. No, Dude, I've never played any. This is me too. No. First time coming this in. This is man. first time, but I would absolutely play. I mean, it's on my fancy card. I want to do well. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's not. Dude, it's, it's, not like my, it's like buying my own album. You know what I mean. <laughs> Dude, that, I mean, church. That's not, again not apples and apples, but in terms of legacy and how long their IPs been around. That's like me coming up like I never play Final Fantasy, but this Chocobo Racing mobile game is really good. I think I might check out the next game. <laughs> hey, if you like it, you like it. You like it, you like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, so I, hear you, I hear you, bro. That, that's my quick synapse when you're like, man, Immortals great. I'm like, it's not Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, they're lying to you. <laughs> Immortals did what it needed to do in terms of got me interest, interested in the IP. 
Yeah. And when four is coming out, I'm ready to have a full Diablo experience. So And that's and that's literally the marketing plan, I think, for for Immortal to even exist, right? Ignoring so. the ign- ignoring the monitor that you just done for the Chinese mobile market of ten cent. But yeah, that was the goal. <laughs> that was the goal, Jarrell. It was that to was go from Immortal to Diablo Four. <laughs> four <laughs> s- specifically church. They wrote a yeah, marketing yeah. plan it specifically was, for church. I mean, we're making it supposed to go from Immortals to Chinese mobile market to Diablo Four. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but I will say the cutscenes look amazing. Blizzard, yeah. there's one thing the Blizzard could do well: cinematic cutscenes. That's that's been their bread and butter since day one. Cinematic cutscenes. Um, um, voice acting throughout the entire game, even when yeah. we're talking to people, it's crazy. Um, so. And that, oh, so nice. another, thing you, another thing you mentioned, uh, Church, that is new to Diablo: in-game cutscenes. Um, having your character in the cutscene, ha- um, as like I don't even mean like with the skins and stuff, with your gears. I mean having your character in the cutscene. That's yeah. new. Every yeah. cutscene up to every, every cutscene up to now in Diablo has just been like again where the audience just watching. So something. did your character ever used to talk in Diablo? Because my character like, was talking, my my character sings. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, you know <laughs> they're, that's my guy. Off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> Outside the cutscenes, yes. So like when you're in battle, you know, you're in battle, you know, like oh, and you're healing, whatever. Yes, but then also when you do psych like side quests. You know, yeah. like the exclamation point of us, you go talk to him. That's in, there's in game dialogue. Like okay. in the cutscenes, you in the cutscenes, your character never existed. Okay. It's like you're here in this town, and there's a cutscene way over there. That that was that's all it was. You know, like we were the we're, like we're not like during a cutscene, we're no longer the player, we're now the audience. Gotcha. Um, and it worked. It wasn't old bad. school Final Fantasy style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but so the fact again, so again for. There were, there, were there other games are used to that for us to, for us Diablo players having a character in the cutscene that's new. I'm looking forward to that. Um, open world map that's new. Diablo is a dungeon crawler. Mounts. I mean. They have mounts. They have no. mounts. Mounts. Yes. Oh. Um. The the map for me is going to be. I, I don't know how I'm going to use this map because every Diablo game has been a dungeon crawler. But for me, everyone has their own rule. My rule is you pick a wall and you stick to it and you fill the map. And when you find the stairs that go to the next area, you do that last. So now. That they give me this freedom to, it's like it's like it's like I've done I've been this happy rat in a maze playing Diablo, and now poof, they get rid of all the walls. I don't know do this freedom. I don't know to do it because, because oh. uh, and I was happy it. with the maze. That's how <laughs> an, that's how animals in the zoo feel and they die. <laughs> well, you let them off into the wild. <laughs> the ecosystem I'm not used to it. Because <laughs> that I mean it was a good it was a good formula. You know, because it was, you know, the dungeon crawler, you know, you're in mountains world, mountains level one, then boom, yeah. mountains level two, mountains level three, um, with dungeons in between. Um, I want to say something else. Something I wish Diablo can can do, because mind you, we, I was talking about, I was talking about real quick, kind of, Skyrim was the first for a lot of things. We saw a lot of Skyrim clones or Skyrim lights. Dungeon crawler. Diablo was the king of dungeon crawlers, but now we've seen a lot. So, for example, I have a question for you. This is a loaded question. Just I'm just trying to mentally picture it. Um, so, the, the the equipment, the inventory. You said you can mark it as trash. Do you yeah. still have to go to the shop or the town to sell it? Um, yeah. I mean, as of right now, as level eight, you can sell it to like the armorer from Gil or like the blacksmith to get materials, right? But you still have to. But you have to leave the dungeon to go like stop stop yeah. the dungeon or like ah, see. Okay. But there's like there's like there's a lot of inventory. They the inventory has like four sections, right? So your consumables is in its tab of its own. So it doesn't well, take up that space. And we're looking at about maybe one, two, three. Well, the reason, okay, the reason I'm reacting is because there's Diablo-like games that have a mechanic to fix that. So yeah. there's, there's a series drill. I, I've talked about it before. I during tips and chips for sure. Tips and, tri- tips and chips. I might have talked about it during here. Torchlight. My favorite Diablo clone, Diablo clone, is Torchlight 1 and 2. Not 3. 3 was microtransaction. It, 3 doesn't exist. <laughs> but Torchlight 1 and 2 were, to me, in terms of gameplay and core mechanics, I think yeah, Torchlight 1 and 2 is the best Diablo clone. One thing that Torchlight did, I wish so many RPGs would do, you get, you get a pet. At first, you think the pet is just um, aesthetics, a dog, a bird, cat. Uh, but no. It, it it fights. It's in combat with you. It has its own backpack for inventory, and it does something amazing. You can send it to town to go sell stuff. Oh, that's Why cool. doesn't every RPG have this? Hey, dog. Here, 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 dog. Take all my junk. Then go away for ten minutes, real time. Ten minutes, real time. 
go sell it, and then come back. Good boy. Who's a very good boy. <laughs> Dave <laughs> needs to have that. That's pretty Every, cool. I, you know, I mean, again, I mean, just like again, minus the again, uh, this isn't. An, an, I mentioned it because it's a Diablo clone, it's a dungeon crawler, but that mechanic. I want to sell it, these things, please. <laughs> it doesn't like, make any sense, but it's cool. Can you imagine? Because like, can you, can you imagine like playing a game? You don't have to stop. You don't have to fast travel. You don't have to organize. Just nope. Yeah. Take all my junk, transfer it to your canyon. You hold X. It goes away for ten minutes. It comes back. It brings back money. On, I, that's that's the mechanic I have loved. That's been that's been in the Torchlight one. That was that, that wasn't a new update for Torchlight two. That was a core mechanic <laughs> in Torchlight one and two. I mean, you're playing a dungeon crawler um, to not be taken out of it just for inventory management and just go go play, just go keep going keep going. I I wish every RPG <laughs> did that. Just you have a buddy who's just a walking knapsack. Now, mind you, if you build right, your pet can do more damage. It is a proper attack battle companion. Um, I I played, I forget what they call. I think it's the engineer. So that was my class. My class was having buddies that do a ton of damage. So a, a, kind of like the necromancer equivalent, like a summoner. Like, I'm back here. My army go do everything. Yeah. Um, but again, just, I was hoping, I was hoping that Diablo might have done something that its clone did. That again, Diablo or not, I wish every RPG had a, a companion that just poof, tipped off and sold all your stuff. Well, maybe Diablo will. I, I don't know what the mounts do once you unlock them. So maybe they hold more inventory or you can send items to your horse mount. I, I don't know, but hopefully they have a feature like that or something. Um, Definitely. But I, I don't mind going back into town. You know, I get to see people. You know, it's very quick. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's not bad, but it's definitely one of those mechanics I have been baby yeah. to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, especially if you're trying to run a dungeon to get a drop, you know, over and over again. It's just right. like, yo, not, I'm, my shit's filled right now. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you're like, you either got to dissemble or sell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will, I will say that, but if there's anybody like to a point in church where, Minus Immortals, this demo is your first thing into Diablo. If you're itching, I don't know how much you're itching for a Diablo or for a dungeon crawler, but you want to play a solid game, Torchlight 1 or 2, the game's Ooh. multiple year old, it's on sale, find it, play it. So there is something that may help with that mechanic. Um, I don't know if this was just ever in Diablo games in general, but if I'm out in the open world, I could just hold down the D-pad and it would teleport me to the city. And now I'm in the middle of the city, like by the blacksmith. I can sell the shit to the blacksmith, and my teleport is still open. I go back in that teleport, uh, the, and it the, brings the me tele- back to the exact same location I just left. The exact yeah. same. Yeah. So teleport, I don't uh, teleport scroll. Yeah. So it, it mm-hmm. so that's new. Being in, you could go back to the city and come back exactly where you left off. That's 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 been there before. It's been there before via inventory. Uh, mm-hmm. the teleport the teleport scroll. It's mm-hmm. not a scroll. It's just a um. Maybe it is like a key item, but it's just, it's a, I'm not using a consumable. It's, okay. Well, then if it's not consumable, then I want to say that's new. It yeah. Might been, it might have been three, but either way, the mechanic of the portal, yeah, it's there. It, 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 again, it's not horrible because Diablo and other dungeon crawlers have a teleport scroll, yeah. but, you know, hey, Doc, go away. I want to go kill someone. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, I think that's going to do it here for the Games for Life podcast. The last topic on the show is something we kind of talked about before. Is basically just saying how uh, video game developers are are positive, or, or they are voting yes on the transition when it happens, and it seems like it's becoming more and more of a reality. Uh, Microsoft keeps handing out ten dollar uh, or ten year deals, like how Oprah hands out cars <laughs> or used to. <laughs> so. Oh, the Microsoft acquisition. Yeah, the 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 many bindings of bindings, but um, yeah. nevertheless, I'll oh, go ahead, Arthur. Oh, that was it. I'm just like, it's gonna happen. I mean, like, yeah, it seems again, like it's I, became more reality. again. Just you know, just again, cue cue my rant from the movie. The, the other guys, Will Ferrell, like, yeah, oh, SEC, you guys are on top of it. Except for Enron, Brady <laughs> Madoff, Goldman Sachs, <laughs> housing crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, first and foremost, I wanted to thank both of y'all, Arthur and Church, for holding it down this episode. And we went through a lot of content today, two episodes of Last of Us and a bunch of other shit. So, thank you so much. And uh, thanks for the info on uh, Diablo 4 Beta, Church. Uh, anytime, man. I'll let you guys know 
how Halo goes in the next coming weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, we need to talk about your Halo Halo you Infinite save it for the next episode. All right, all right, let me, let episode one hundred. Episode yeah. one hundred. Oh, no. We gotta have mad rants. Episode one hundred. <laughs> oh, no. Hey drill. Hey drill. We're keeping tradition. We're gonna talk about Halo. We are. Yeah. We, that, that is that is tradition. We <laughs> we, we we usually forget. Okay, Halo shit. That's funny. <laughs> oh man. All right, folks. Well, this that is it here for the Game Slide Podcast again each and every Friday slash Saturday discussing all things games. Whenever you're real with me or my co-hosts, Arthur and Church. That's me. All right. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.